Hey everybody, this is Christine Bertram and... Hi guys! It's Callie! I'm much more sprightly than I was this morning in our Technique <laughs> Thursday videos. So! <Yeah. laughs> we are ro rocking and rearing and ready to go. We got on a few minutes earlier than normal because we wanted to catch people um, early on. I need to get on the job and start <clears throat> and Kelly's going to get starting to share. I think we have everybody's numbers for game night. This way we can make sure we're live, all's good in the hive. <laughs> so yes, live on the hive, Christine and Kelly. It's like, I feel like you're Kelly Ripa, kind of. <laughs> like, like live with Chris and Kelly. <laughs> That's so, funny. All right, let's see if we've got everything working. All these shenanigans with <laughs> technology. We are in the Stampin' Game Night and Card Workshop group. That's why we are just making sure there we are so we've got heather Woo heather you're the first one to say hi so heather i think we figured things out with you so that's good you're in the right place hi danny olson i'm so excited you guys are all here with us tonight yay so yeah danny it feels like forever since i've chatted with you this whole going to hawaii cramping my dad cramping it cramped my stamping abilities with everybody <laughs> But it was good. Well needed. <clears throat> so we're going to let people roll in. Hi, Jean Maxwell. And Kelly's going to also share the video in the Cards by Christine business page and also the VIP group so that people can catch it. We're not normally live in the Stampin' Game Night on a Thursday night. So we're mm -hmm. throwing people for a loop that aren't used to this. Hi, Sandy Wicklinder. Woohoo! Sandy says, hi, Kelly. Hello, hello. <clears throat> so here we are. We're up to nine. Uh -huh. Hi, Roxanne. Hi, Linda. And so we have had some hot days here in Wisconsin. <laughs> I think it hit in the 90s. We got like a rain shower for all of 30 seconds. Yep. I think over the lunch hour, all of a sudden it started to downpour. And then within 30 seconds, it was done. <laughs> and we needed that little bit of rain. Every little bit helps now. Hi, Denise. Hi, Donna. Yes, you guys are finding us. So <clears throat> we're, we went on just a little bit early, so it's not quite 6 o'clock. You're not going to have this happen very often. <laughs> I am more of a jit or a just-in-timer. <laughs> I fly by the seat of my pants. I think you guys know that. And I'm more of a <clears throat> 5 to 10 minutes late. -er. And Kelly's even um, later. <laughs> She's always... I blame my kids. That yeah. cannot be my fault. <laughs> she can blame her kids. Yeah, I can't blame any kids. So. <laughs> nope. You can blame my kids. <clears throat> I can blame Kelly's kids, though. That's what she said. So, um, oh, 113 perfect. 113 degrees. And hi, Dar. Hi, Latokia. Yes, so um, I also saw that Bar Barco posted it was 125 degrees in Lake Havasu. Um, yeah, 125 degrees is hot. <laughs> like, it's not, way hot. makes me feel like our hot is not hot. <laughs> Hi, Jeannie Parker. Haven't you heard that like Wisconsin's hot is like so humid that yeah, it's like it thick. is hotter <laughs> than other people's hot? <laughs> So Donna said that they're supposed to get a, a thunderstorm in Northeast Ohio tomorrow. So it may be working its way there. I don't know. I feel like the weather, I don't know how fast. It depends how fast it travels. <laughs> but I know usually what happens here goes across Lake Michigan, and they get it in Michigan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hi, Dan. Hi, Julie. So we're up to 21, so that's good. So here's the thing. Um, your hair looks super <gasps> cute, Kelly. Did you get it cut? Yes, I she did. did. Yes. I think it was maybe a week or two ago, and I cut eight inches off. It was just way too long and straggly, um, and my son is a little more than one, and he just pulls, pulls and it. Oh, man. <clears throat> so I had enough to donate, so I donated it. Oh, very so, good. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Kim. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Judy Bobo. Yes, um, so Kelly got her hair cut. I got home from Hawaii and it was cut. So oh, yeah, it's been right. about a week and a half. So it was the day you did that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I came from my She hair came hair. on a Sunday, I think. And yep, yep she had just got her hair cut. So yeah. yeah, very cool. So hi, Anne from Vermont. Hi. So we're, we have 29 people <clears throat> that participated and registered for the Stampin' Game Night tonight. So I want to make sure we're not at 24, and I know not everybody can make it tonight. We had a couple people call today, and we're 
were worried because things came up, like things that you can't get out of and things that, and that's good. We all have that, you guys. So we have, I know we're not going to have everybody here. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Brenda. Eight inches. Yes. <clears throat> she had eight inches that cut off. I probably yep. have eight inches I could get cut off, but Tyler would probably break up with me. No, I'm just kidding. He wouldn't. <laughs> we have an understanding. We wouldn't break up with each other over hair, but we tease each other. Uh, I like facial hair on a guy. I think I grew up with my dad having a beard all of my life, and so I love Tyler with facial hair. And so he loves long hair. <laughs> So we have an agreement that I keep my hair long and he keeps facial hair. <laughs> okay, so, but I'm going to call you on that because you also grew up with a dad who wore suspenders every day. Yeah, so, I don't see Tyler rocking no, the suspenders. So I don't think my dad wore suspenders, though, until like maybe 20 years ago. Or did he have them all his life? I don't remember I don't my dad know. wearing suspenders his whole life. But facial hair is different. So, yeah. so Tyler had to shave. So if you guys saw the pictures from Hawaii. Hi, Melanie boy. Hi, Deb. Hi. Oh, I said Heather already. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm so confused with comments when they come in if they've if you guys have already been in. But so I don't know if you guys saw some pictures from Hawaii. Tyler shaved his beard that he had been growing since basically when we started dating three years ago. <laughs> when we started dating, he started growing a beard. <laughs> so it's been three and a half years. And he shaved it off so that he could go snorkeling. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. So hi, Lynn Beasley. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Faye. Hi, Angela. So he shaved it off because with snorkeling, when you're wearing the whole mask get up contraption, if you have a beard, it doesn't create a good seal or suction yeah. around your face. And so, yep, he shaved it all off and he had a baby face. <laughs> so I didn't break up. He was really worried, though. He asked me, he's like, are you going to break up with me if I shave off my beard? I'm like, Tyler. No, I am not like that. I mean, I might not like you for a little while. But yeah, so it was really weird. I was like, where do you have my boyfriend hiding inside there somewhere? Because he looked like a completely different person. So, hi, Stacy Ray. Woohoo. So, we're getting there. We've got like 33 people. Um, yes, fortunately, <laughs> most of the time, hair grows back. <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> I think the older I get... The more hair I lose, you get like hair loss because kids pull on it, right? Mm -hmm. I play with my hair, so it's just it's a thing I've done since I was a little kid. So I play with my hair, and it like seems to as every year oh, I get older, it just disappears faster. So mm -hmm. hi, Anna Rabadou. All right, so <clears throat> we have some things. We might as well start going over as people are still coming. In. I'm gonna show you some cards that. Um, Kelly made Technique Thursday today. So if you guys missed Technique Thursday, she it pulled... It was a little bit of a hot mess, guys. She, Enjoy. <laughs> she, she pulled it out of the, you know what? Um, so Kelly's been super, super swamped and busy at her day job. She <laughs> works at the Children's Museum here in Fond du Lac. And uh, it's been very demanding on her because they are short help. And so she's playing the role of like three people. So by the time Technique Thursday comes, <laughs> it's like she tries to get them done five days in advance like on the weekend she'll come but like last night it was midnight probably oh, yeah it was midnight when she finished it so she tries her best and i do too but so you guys can watch technique thursday when you have a chance so um let's see here yes hi barbara brown okay i'm gonna flip this down you guys can see what kelly made for her technique thursday card um i don't know if you can catch oh yeah you can catch all that stella oh there it is okay she had a stella explosion she told me <laughs> i haven't quite watched the video i watched part of it but i didn't see this part yet where it exploded and so she just put it all over it so <laughs> so she was working with a versamark pad and how you do tone on tone with a versamark pad so if you guys missed this and she did a cute little note card so that one's i like the summery colors with that i thought i'd also share with you while people are rolling in melanie foy made this card for me so this is a thank you card you guys i think kelly saw this and she thought it was super cool she wants to do a technique thursday for this card she likes how melanie used the scraps of paper here like this so so that was a card from melanie <laughs> so you couldn't tell it was late last yeah, night yeah melanie says you couldn't tell it was late last night so that's good i had fourth of july bingo last night Woohoo! so you guys there aren't many fourth of july ish things in the annual catalog <laughs> so i'm so thankful that the so many stars dies are still available so I really went crazy with the stars on here. And then I pulled in the popsicles to do some red. Oh, I have some red, white, and blue popsicles. 
So just to give you guys, I know 4th of July is not next week, but the week after. So if you are needing some 4th of July cards, hopefully these give you some inspiration so you can add them to your plate to make some cards. The Celebrate here comes from a set called Create with Friends. And this Let's Celebrate comes from Celebrating Sunflowers. Celebrating sunflowers, something like that. Celebrate yeah, sunflowers. It's something yeah, something sunflowers. So it says, yeah. let's celebrate you, and we masked off the you. So just some ideas for Fourth of July for you guys. Hi, Bobby McPherson. Okay, so those are some cards I wanted to share with you. You guys, you see here, I have a paper pumpkin from last month. Yeah, I haven't gotten rid of this lonely little soldier from May of 2021 called Batter Up. <clears throat> if anybody's still looking for one, reach out to me. And uh, if you're looking for a good time, watch the replay of uh, me making it. <laughs> yes, Kelly did that one. <laughs> Kelly did that replay or did that um, paper pumpkin. Um, the other thing to um, so Donna said that I found that you can remove some Stella with rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip. Oh, that there makes you go. Sense. Good tip. Good tip. Um, the other thing too, so you guys, <clears throat> for the last six months to three quarters of a year. I have sold out of every card kit I have ever made. For, like if I plan for an X amount and I, I, I usually don't have any left at the end of the day and I feel bad. I've had to say no to people. So hi, Gwen. So I actually have some sets left for tonight. I have the goodie bag along with the card kits. And so I know that the cost for registration included the game night portion of it. And I used a portion of everybody's proceeds from the registration to buy all the prizes. And so it wouldn't be the full price of what people paid, but if anybody's interested in the goodie bag and the set of four cards as a package, I will figure out what the price is. But if anybody's interested, let me know. I would love to find some happy homes. Hi, Mo, yay! Um, so let me just show you what, the, what this consisted of. So everybody that signed up for the registration tonight, you got your four card kits which is we're going to be making these four cards throughout the night. So here come the chickens. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. So those are the four cards that we're going to be making. So you got your four card kits. And in your goodie bag, I put a sheet of... Hi, Nadine. I put a sheet of dimensionals. You got your chalk marker. You got five feet of linen thread. You guys, I love the linen thread. If you haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> and then you got your own pack of blending brushes. And I did this when I figured out the goodie bag. We're using three blending brushes tonight. So your goodie bag, you guys, these are on back order. You can't get these until July now. I think they're on back order till July. Um, <clears throat> so um, so how this is, is it's a package. This is the goodie bag plus the four card kits. If you're interested, I'll figure out what the price is. I know for those people who did the whole shebang, it was a $40 fee for the goodie bag, the class, and then also the, um, towards the, to be able to play and win prizes. So it would be less than that. I just have to figure out how much of the, that portion of the payment was for the prizes. And so, but you guys, I don't generally have stuff left over. <laughs> so I have three actually. So if anybody's interested in that, please don't write in the comments of this post or the video, please message me privately. I don't always catch stuff when it gets posted in here. So, oh, so Jean said that she, so Kelly is taking notes for me. Yep. So, so Jean, we will catch that and we'll connect later tonight or tomorrow. Um, Stacy, so I don't have just a set of cards. I actually have, it would be with the goodie bag and the set of cards. So it wouldn't be the actual. So what I did offer for this class is you could buy an extra set of cards for $10 and it wouldn't be just the cards. It would be with the goodie bag. So I keep everything together. So, so I don't know if that interests you, Stacy, in a whole complete another package, but if you are, just message me. Okay. I always ask that you guys message me or follow up. And if you don't hear back from me, then reach out. So, oh yes. So Angela told me, she's like, did everybody get all of that in their goodie bag and the blending brushes and everything? And I'm like, yeah, I, I figured it all out when I was making these cards that the awesomeness of these cards is blending the sky and blending the sand and the dirt and the grass. And if you guys don't have blending brushes or sponges, you'll need them. And I mm -hmm. wanted everybody to be successful with these cards. So everybody got blending brushes and 
also a chalk marker. So um, Elaine said that she wants uh, one of the packages. So Perfect. Elaine, Kelly is writing that down now. So <laughs> here I said, so Kelly, so normally I don't have somebody here helping me, but Kelly's <laughs> always here for game night. So Elaine, we wrote that down. Hi, Cheryl from Ohio. Okay. The other thing too, I wanted to, as long as I have everybody's attention, I wanted to get your feedback and input for the next game night. So the next card workshop and game night is the first uh, third, second Thursday in September. Um, yep, Lane, I'll figure out the cost and I'll let you know. Same with Jean. Um, September 9th, you guys can mark your calendars nine now. I do about four of these a, a year, so almost every quarter. So September 9th is the next one. I don't have all the details yet, but I wanted to get your feedback on what bundle I should feature. So I always try to feature something uh, like a bundle. Um, so Linda, so so I saw Ruth and Linda. So Linda Bendick um, and Ruth had mentioned too. So I have to find out from Stacy first if she was oh, um So Stacy puts you on another set. So I I'm covered, <laughs> guys. They're all gone now. I don't. I I think I had the first three people were Elaine, Stacy, and Jean that I saw. So, and I'll make sure, and then I have on standby Linda and Ruth. <laughs> you guys, okay. So I want your feedback. So if you like the idea of the next stamp set and punch that I'm thinking about doing for the next game night, show me lots of hearts and lots mm -hmm. of um, likes, because if that's the case, then this is what I'm gonna go full speed ahead with and start working on designing these cards. And um, I'm gonna show you three samples I got. I did these during the Swap Card so Showcase, so some of you have seen them, but they're just ideas to show you what we can make with them. So I'm thinking of doing the turtle and friends for the next game night. I don't have him slated for many of my other classes. So I thought, Ooh, we could pull him in. And one of the cards would be a spinner card like this. So I just got the give it a whirl dies. Mm -hmm. And so we would do something very similar to this and make a little spinner card. Oh, I'm Ooh, seeing hearts. Okay. Hard. So yeah. So everybody get a little brads and, we, you know, I don't know about the googly eyes. I'll have to figure out if I've got extra googly eyes. <laughs> but here's another card, a, a fun, simple, like just elegant looking baby card. Like just the colors are so soft and it could be, um, she used the reverse negative of this right here. So that's a sample and she used um, vanilla. Oh my God, look, look at, at all the hearts. hearts. Oh moving. my God. Okay, here's another cutie card. I almost would want to do these exact cards, but I have to change them up a little bit because these are swap cards. So I don't like to take people's ideas verbatim exactly. I like to make them up and put my own little twist on them. But aren't they so cute? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I think we have a winner, winner chicken so. dinner <laughs> for this. So um, yes. So, okay, um, what new mini catalog? Oh my gosh, so Danny just asked what new mini catalog. Well, there's a new mini catalog coming out for the holidays and it's, um, oh, Spinner, so love the puffins too. Yeah, the puffins are awesome too. So there's a new holiday catalog, Danny, that's coming out and it starts August 2nd and you're on my team. And so as a demonstrator or discount shopper, you actually will get access to the new holiday catalog June 24th. I believe that's the date. And you can start ordering from it July that's 1st. That's like so soon. Yeah, oh it is so goodness. soon. Yeah, so cool. Okay, well, it sounds like we have a winner for the turtle. So I'm so excited. Now I can start creating with turtles. <laughs> so, okay. Um, all right. Yeah, um, yep. So Deb just commented too that the new cat it comes out in July for demonstrators, but it's available to purchase from in August. So what happened is it got pushed out a month. It's normally supposed to be July 1st, but because of worldwide global pandemic shipping mm -hmm. craziness, it got pushed out a month. So it's August 2nd for customers, just July 1st for demonstrators, discount shoppers. So yeah. Okay. So the turtles and the annual catalog though. So, okay. And then if you guys are wondering too, I have the snowman builder slated or snowman season slated for the December game night. So, okay. So I think that was a little bit about everything. Um, we want to talk really quick about how to play and rules and all that kind of stuff. We kind of have a little change from how we used to do it. We, we have 29 people signed up. So I'm going to do roll call really quick just to make sure if you guys are here, you can shout out and say, Hey, um, Feline, Brenda, Jean, Leslie, Dar, Ann, Heather, Stacy, Deanne, Sandy, Angela, Roxanne, Faye, Pamela, Melanie, Carmen, Lynn, Jeannie, Danny, Judy, 
Mo, Patricia, Latokia, Melanie, two. So there's two Melanies tonight. Uh, Linda, so there's two Lindas. So Linda with a Y, and then I have Linda with an I. Ellen, Deb, and Donna. So we do have 29. And um, thank you all for registering. So I was worried that the chickens weren't going to be that big of a hit. And I have 29. And then for the one in April with the dragonflies, we had 32. So we're right around the same amount of people. So um, does I begged everybody to make sure you guys have your numbers. So I sent two emails on it. I think one yesterday and one before. Um, if you guys don't have your numbers in front of you, um, <laughs> we'll forgive you. Uh, but Kelly's here, but I know last time we spent 10 or 15 minutes going over numbers for people and I didn't want to have to do that. So I'm thinking that almost everybody should have their numbers. So that's awesome. I haven't heard anything otherwise. Um, so how we're going to do it is a little bit different than we've done. You guys, we evolve and we learn. <laughs> we learn from things that happen. And we never like to cause hardship or a heartache or anything to anybody. We always just try to share love and happiness. So, oh, Feline years are still in San Francisco. I wondered because I think Faye said that hers were not there yet. So I'm curious if Faye's made it. But what we're going to do for this is, so how we play, so we're, how the night's going to work is we're going to play a game of Stamp, which is kind of like bingo in a sense. And then we're gonna make a card and then game card, game card until we have four games, five, four cards and five games played. And um, so out of the 29 people, those are the only people that should be commenting if they have numbers. So when I go through my numbers, I have all these little numbers here ready to go on pieces of paper like I generally do. And I, let's say I call 24 and you have a number 24, you're gonna type in the comment S. And if I call your next number, then you're going to write ST, and then your next number, STA. And then once you have all five numbers of your yours called, you would type in STAMP. And then as we're going through, you guys can see who is getting close and then who gets it at the end. And so in the past, we always went off of who said it first. Well, we had some technology, technological, blah, 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 technology um, issues where I saw the comments come up, but then when you watch the replay, the comments were actually reverse times. Ugh, so bad. I rewarded those people who got ended up getting consolation prizes. I made it right, and we got them things that uh, I think I made it right. <laughs> I tried to, anyways. Um, so how we're gonna do it now is Kelly's watching alongside. She's got all the numbers up. So we're gonna know if multiple people get stamped at the same time. If two or three or four people all get stamped on the same game, we're gonna do a random number generator. And one person is gonna get the, the master Mac Daddy prize. That's how, because I have five prizes. And then what happens is anybody else who got stamp on that hand would get a consolation prize. And I, that's how I, I budgeted in some consolation prizes in case there are um, ties. So, oh, Faye got hers today, awesome. Um, I am not on YouTube. I am. I always upload the video to YouTube from my Thursday nights on Saturdays. So it gives some love on Saturdays for YouTube. So, um, oh, so Judy's having issues too. So it's got to be internet. So here, that the reason why we made this change is so that hmm. you guys don't have to stress about watching your numbers and saying stamp so close and it's not a race. We want you guys to relax, have fun not be stressed. And then on top of it, what came out of um, this too is that we had two people with emergencies that came up today that can't be with us. And I have to put myself in their shoes and you would put yourself in their shoes as if like, oh shoot, like you signed up for this event and you have to be present to win and now you feel like, uh, <laughs> right? So what we're gonna do is from this point going forward, you never have to feel bad if something comes up and you've just paid for a game night and your numbers are the winning numbers. So Kelly has everybody's numbers jotted down. I think you guys will be happy to hear that and I hope you think that's fair that that if they happen to have their five numbers called and we know that, what will happen is they'll get the last prize that's left. They just don't get to pick a prize, they get what's left. I think, I hope you guys are okay with that. My words are always ahead of my mouth, <laughs> I think, <laughs> by a little bit. <laughs> um, and also, you guys, I am about 10 seconds ahead I think of it's you. 20. It might be 20. Kelly just yeah. said I might be 20. You guys, 
there's a delay with Facebook and um, with everything, even when you use Zoom or when you use YouTube. I think that there is a delay of between 10 and 20 seconds. And so, you guys, that's why I always sometimes will not know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, all right, you guys say it's fair. Or at least Deb said it's fair. So, I hope that's good. So, okay. Um, anything else we want to do before we get going with our first game? Um, sounds very fair. Good. Okay, the other thing, too, is... At the end of the night, I have some extra little door prizes I want to give away. We had 52 people who filled out the door prize form. And I said, Kelly reminded me, for every 10, we would do a door prize. So I have t five um, packs of paper that are from the pattern party. And so I'll do five. We'll draw five names. And then also I'll do three for every 10 that were from registered. So we're going to do three for those that registered of these paper packs. So the deal with that is if you've won once, you can't win on both ends of that equation. So, um, but you could definitely win a pack of paper. So very fun. Okay. Are you, hi, Ju Jody. Okay. You guys are saying that sounds fair. So we try to be fair and we try not to cause stress and like anxiousness with people. <laughs> like that's <laughs> the last thing we want. So. All right, are you guys ready? We can play our first game. So if you are, give me some thumbs ups, give me some hearts, give me some likes. Kelly's gonna be over here on the side monitoring the, Excel. so I keep everything in an Excel spreadsheet, guys. I'm a very organized person, if you um, <laughs> didn't guess that. You have to be. I have to be, oh my goodness. So you guys, I think you're ready. So I will flip this down. Okay, so I have these things that I cut out of the catalog. They're the new catalog. I cut up a new catalog, guys. Already. <laughs> Already. And so I put numbers on all these different beautiful bundles and dies. And so we can talk about that stuff while we go. And then I'm going to flip these over. And I'll start calling numbers. So as you guys, as I start calling your numbers, make sure that you start writing the, the letters. Oh, you guys are so ready. Yay. Mm -hmm. We're going to pick this one. Number two. You guys, I get so excited about the number two. I, I don't, it goes back to my childhood. <laughs> so only my brother could probably really understand and my mom. <laughs> so we had a cat that was named Two, <laughs> Petunia. <laughs> okay, so Brilliant Wings dies. Okay, number two. Number two is the first number. I'm so excited. My lucky number. You guys, when we played bingo last night, people like to look for the bingo cards that have the number two on it <laughs> because I get so excited. Okay, number four. Four is our next number. Hi, Jean Benson. Oh, Angela's got an S. And Roxanne's got an S. Woohoo. Oh, you guys, we didn't even go over the prizes. Oh, my goodness. I think. I, Why don't we do it at the end of the first round? At the round? end of the first round here, we'll go over the prizes so that you guys can um, see them all together. Look at so many S's. Oh, you guys, I have this bundle slated for a car oh. class in August, one of the August monthly classes. I'm so excited. number 19 is your number here for the cooking. Roxanne's got ST. Okay. You guys, oh my goodness. Number 23 uh -huh. in the tropics dies. Okay. You guys, I wasn't going to show you guys any cards. I was going to save it for tomorrow, but I'll show you a sneak peek. Just one sneak peek. This is ink, paper, scissors for next month in july and this is one of the cards that we're gonna do for that and you guys tyler took this card from me and he redid all the gems he made it look like hawaii down here hawaii maui hana um, oahu and Kauai. he i had these gems everywhere else but not like that he took them all off and repositioned them <laughs> So he can, and then he put one up in the sky because he's like, you have to have an odd number. And I'm like, yes, dear, you do. Oh my that's gosh. Funny. Okay. So that's my sneak peek on in the tropics. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I got back from Hawaii and I got so inspired by that, that I was so happy. I picked that set for in the ink, paper, scissors. All right, you guys, number eight, I wrote it kind of sideways over there, but it's nature's thoughts is number eight. That's your next number. Okay, we've got a bunch of STs. Hi, Jean Terwilliger. Okay, you guys, look at this one. Our welcoming window. Ooh. That one is being featured this month. Oh, man. Well, maybe we'll go grab it in a second when we keep playing, but I'll show you the card. I'm going to go get it right now, actually. I got to show you guys this. <laughs> I, I cased this card from the catalog to make the class card. 
So you can see where I got my inspiration for the curtains. <laughs> so yeah, so there we go. Number 15 is the window flowers box, welcoming window. All right, let's go down to the bottom of the pile. Danny's got ST. Sandy's got S. Okay, number nine, the big cats, you guys. There's a couple people that I know that love these big cats. I just got the bundle. It's on <laughs> order. It's coming. It'll be here next week. I was so on the fence with this one. But then I looked at the dies, and I'm like, oh, I can work with the dies. Like, I'm not so sure. My brother loves tigers. Mark does. And so... Um, really? We're all about Mark these days. Remember? Yeah, yeah. The baseball? Yep. Mark likes tigers and he likes baseball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Stampin' Up! did good by him in this catalog. <laughs> okay, you guys. Number five. Number five. It's a picture of this. Um, I don't know if I've gotten this one yet, but you make these little critters that pop out of the window peaky, bo peaky boo holes. <laughs> so I, have to, I haven't gotten this yet. I have to figure out. I got to be inspired. I, so sometimes I got to see things before I buy just like everybody else I think okay number 12 you guys the painted labels this was part of the poppy set that carried over I think it's going on two years now so pretty the labels are awesome for putting extra words on your card so look at Brenda Woods got STA she's rocking it Woohoo! okay Carmen's got ST Sandy's got ST number 13 Number 13, I'm excited because Angie Liner on my team picked this bundle for the team swap party. So I'm so excited to see what she's going to create with it. Um, it's called Grapevine. Number 13 is the next number. I have really big rectangles here. They're taking up a lot more space. Mm -hmm. Heather's got an S. Woohoo! Ellen's got ST. Okay. So the next number is 17, you guys. Peaches for free. <laughs> peaches for me. <laughs> you remember the Peaches song from the 90s? This is what I think of when I see the Peaches. So Peaches is going to be featured in the Ink Paper Scissors for August. I'm just thinking about making these cards now that I've got the tropical ones done. But Peaches is number 17. Hi, Stacy Burns. Look at Donna Dress. She's got... S T A M. Okay, Phil. Oh my gosh, Brenda Wood. S T A M P. You want to confirm, Brenda? It. What, and Judy Bobo had the S T A M. So Brenda, what I need for you to do is type in your numbers into the comments section so we can confirm so, and make sure that Kelly's seeing that as well. So I see that Brenda has a one, and I don't think one was called. So let's see what she comes over as. Yep. Brenda, you ha you wrote S-T-A-M-P. Oh, she doesn't. Okay, because we didn't see that you did on this end. She's close. You're close. So, Brenda, we just saw that you had stamped there. So, we were just wanting it, to confirm. It could be an autocorrect thing. Yep, it could be an autocorrect thing. That's what phones do these days. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to keep rocking and rolling and hoochie coo. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, number seven is a uh, batik. <laughs> batik, you guys. What is it, Kelly? Is batik. it batik? Okay. It's, it's so, a type of fabric. It's a type of fabric. Okay. So it's batik boutique. It, I think is no. the name of the bundle. It's well, like it's a, tongue a tongue twister. twister. <laughs> oh, Brenda, no worries. No worries. We were we're good. You we're, we're we're keeping going. So I think your phone probably auto fixed it <laughs> or like made it say it. So all good. Okay. So number seven is um is the next one. All right. Let's see if anybody got it with number seven. Oh, Stacy's got S T A M. That's close. That's very close. Oh, Donna! I saw Donna come through. Okay, Donna, we see stamp written for you. So if you could confirm your numbers, we're also gonna make sure that nobody else has it and that you're the only winner, winner chicken dinner. If that's the case, once you write your numbers, we'll just confirm that really quick, and then we're gonna pull the prizes in so that you guys can see what all we have all things. the beautiful things yep and then you can pick what you want if that's what we've got so donna when you have a second just type in your numbers so what we're going to do quick i know i've shown these in the past but i don't know who was all watching but oh donna's got here five seven nine nine 
17 and 19. We've got a couple. Donna, you were the last person to sign up <laughs> and you're the first one to win. Congratulations. So this is what you guys all have to pick from tonight. So get this, guys. It's the Give It a Whirl dies. It's Give It a Whirl. So I just showed you that turtle card and that's what was used. Now, it also includes this pack of the brads because that's what you use with this. So as you see what you'd like, Donna, just make sure you write it in the comments so that we know. So that's the one. Then there's a bundle here called the Bloom, Art and Bloom. So there's a stamp set, there's an embossing folder, and then there's the coordinating dies. So it's a whole package um, uh, for that bundle. Hi, Mary Carls. Hi, Kimberly. Um, you snuck on here, you guys. <laughs> yeah, good job for D, uh, for Donna. She picked some good numbers. Okay, Tidings and Trimmings is a bundle that is available. You guys, one of my favorites here is the Plentiful Plants. And that one comes with the, we did this for last week for the Fun Folds. Um, perfect Plants and then Plentiful Plants Stamp Set. And last but not least, are the babies <laughs> it's all for the baby uh, baby baby needs new card stuff <laughs> so it's the subtle designer series paper and it goes with the um the so make some pretty baby cards <laughs> so so all right we're gonna put these off to the side and we're gonna get our stuff ready to make our first card so donna hopefully you were watching that okay and you can tell us what you'd like and we'll pull that out and everybody will see what you picked so we know it's gone for next time so you guys what we can do is put our where do we want to set these we're gonna put our numbers off to the side over here donna wants the combo of birthdays son hubby and dog what the spinner. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what is, does that say? Yeah. Okay, so Donna wants to give it a whirl with the little Brad thing. Okay, it. perfect. Okay, well, we can make that happen, Donna. Okay, so you guys, these are the cards we're going to be making. And I was thinking in my head, how do we want to do this smoothly? <laughs> so let's talk about what we're using first. So the set that came out, in the spring mini catalog was the Hey Birthday Chick, and that's what you can find in the catalog. Then they came out February 1st or 4th or 3rd, somewhere in February, they came out with dyes that go with it, and they reintroduced the Hey Chick with matching dyes. This was a celebration product from three or so years ago, and the dyes are awesome. So I tried to keep everything contained to one stamp set, which was actually the Hey Check. When I first started, I thought I was going to go towards this, but then once the card started rolling out of me, mm -hmm. it really used the Hey Chick. But ch these chickens are interchangeable. Like if you don't have Hey Chick and you have the Hey Birthday Chick, I think you can make it work once you start seeing what you got going on. Um, what impressed me more than anything out of all of this stuff are these dyes. Oh my goodness, I love them. I used all the dyes actually from the Hey Chick, except for I pulled in this fence from the Birthday Chick dyes. So I really concentrated on the Hey Chick and the matching dyes. That's where the corn and this little wire fence came, the corn and the husks and all that stuff. So holy Moses, thank you to Anna Rebidu. <laughs> she cut out like 300 little cobs of corn and little husks. She helped me big time. And Pat also helped do a lot of the embossing and bigger die cutting. But well, congratulations to them. They had all of this stuff waiting for me when I got home from Hawaii. Oh, big task. So just so you guys know, Hey Birthday Chick is carrying over with the dies. So you'll be able to get that in the new annual catalog, but this is retiring. So if you still have the stamp set without the dies, you want to consider getting the dies. So it's awesome. They're, they're awesome sets. Um, if you don't have the chickens at home, you can still improvise and put other things on if you don't have chickens. So hi, Julie Bierschbach. Um, you could put other things. So I made these cards as versatile as I could so that if you didn't have the chicken set or weren't in love with chickens, you could use something besides chickens. All of the cards use the blending brushes. So in your goodie bag, you receive from me a pack of three blending brushes. After you start to use them and they get loved, they will have residual staining from the ink. It happens. Like the one thing you never want to do 
um, with these is you, when you're done using them and you rinse them out, you don't want to leave them to dry upside down like this. I always put a paper towel down and I leave them to dry like this so that the water runs down and out of them versus pooling up um, at the head of it. So that's just a little trick with coloring. Uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of it. So we're going to be doing all of our blending. And then the other thing that you got in your goodie bag is the white chalk marker. And you're going to be, I, I don't know, I didn't know who has it or who doesn't have it, but one of the things that made this card that it stuck out to me was the doing the red barn or the it's the red chicken coop chicken coop with the white chalk marker uh, outlining it. So so that's what's in your goodie bag plus a sheet of dimensionals so you guys can pop until you're <laughs> until you can't pop anymore. Um, and so what I thought about you guys all got your envelopes. So what I'm I don't know how much workspace you have, but what I want you guys to do is I want you to pull out pieces with me. Normally I make a card make a card, you know, we, we make one card at a time, but I think what I want to do is because you're, we're going to be doing blending, I would like to do all of the blending that's required on all four pieces and then the inside. So the insides also have some blending. I want to do the blending and get that done right away so that when it comes time for like the second, third and fourth card, we've got that blending done. And so I'm not constantly bringing in, bringing in the blending brushes and taking them out. So what I want you guys to do is we're gonna walk through, you have four different card kits. I want you to pull out pieces so that we can stamp and then we can do all of our blending at the same time. So what you're gonna wanna do, so I just happened to pull up this one first, um, which is this egg card. What I want you guys to do is pull out this, top, this and I hope this isn't super confusing for you guys, but pull out your tag like this, which is what gets blended here. And then also pull out your white piece, one of them. These are both the same size. So just grab one of them because we're gonna put some grass on the bottom here. So grab those two pieces out of that kit first. And so I'm gonna put this back in here and I'm gonna actually take it out of my kit right here so that I have it. So I want, oh, well. I guess there's only one tag there. I guess I might need Kelly to have to go cut one. Okay, so you're grabbing out your tag. So the tag dies are in the middle over there by the okay. punches, and I just need one white tag because it's yeah. the background. Okay, so these two pieces, pull them out first, okay? So that's one. Then what I want you guys to do is this one. <laughs> this was an afterthought. We forgot to add it, and so it got put in the front, and that's why it's in the front. So this is shimmer white. So you're gonna wanna pull out, so this is this card right here. So pull out your shimmer white piece and pull out the white piece. So on this card kit, yep, perfect. On this card kit right here, I want you guys to pull out these two white pieces. What we're doing is we're pulling out all the white and we're gonna do all of our blending first. So these two go here and this one goes here. And so that's that card kit. So your next card kit is the blue one. So on the blue one, you only need to pull out one thing and it's the circle. So pull out that white circle of that one. I'm gonna pull it out of my kit over here. So there's your white circle, that's all you need there. And then lastly, you have this one right here. So that's your last card kit here with the brown. You're gonna pull out two pieces. You're gonna pull out the piece that has the seeds on it and then you're gonna pull out your inside piece. And so <laughs> I worked ahead, I guess. <laughs> I must have been <laughs> ambitious that day. So I already stamped my chicken and I have my crumb cake on the bottom here. So, so, the, so what you guys are doing is you're just going through your kits and you're pulling out the white pieces and we'll go through them again here in one second. I'm just gonna put, Kelly just cut me an extra tag here. So you guys have four card kits with me that we're doing tonight. What I wanna do is I wanna do all the blending at the, at the same time versus pulling all the blending out and, and doing this. So I know Melanie, you just said you're not following well. All we're doing is pulling out this white piece, which is our inside for this kit and a tag. For this card, what we're doing is we're pulling out our shimmer, which is the top, and we're pulling out the white, which is the back. And then on this one, the only thing that's blended on here <laughs> is the circle, so pull out that circle. You guys start, when you're starting, um, 
I get the blue card. The rest don't know. Okay, the, um, so just if you guys have some space, pull out your cards like I just did and open them up and look in them. So there's this one is a brown base. Well, three of them are brown bases. So the white one makes the most sense. I completely get that. <laughs> so the card that you find that has the red barn in it and the, a little crumb cake fence, you're pulling out these two pieces. They actually should look like this. How are you guys doing? I don't want to start doing this until I know that most people have their stuff ready to go. So if I see that some people are getting and following along, then that's okay. I just, I don't want to like confuse anybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in the three ink colors. So all of the blending was, um, was left to three colors, crumb cake, balmy blue, and old olive. So what I was going to do was do the one color first and then do the next color and then the next color. So I'm going to set these pieces off to the side so that we can kind of see. And we're going to start with this guy right here. So we're starting with the card that has the balmy blue um, embossed piece. And you're going to have a tag and you're going to have a white piece. So what I do is I pull in a piece of scrap paper. This is just copy paper I had to cut down. So I put that as my home base. Home base is what's underneath me. And we're gonna start with something easy. We're gonna actually start with the inside. So it's really important that you do your blending before you do your stamping. Because if you do your stamping, then you go to blend, you're gonna smear your stamping potentially. Okay, so we're starting with the inside here. And so I have my blend or my blending brushes start to take on some colors. So I'm going to use the one that has some sort of residual green for the green. <laughs> so, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some green here for underneath his feet. So he's standing on some grass. So when you t open up your ink pad and you dip your blending brush into the ink, when you first go, it leaves a really significant splotch. So I always try to do my first little bit off to the side and then I work my way onto the paper. So what I'm gonna do first to get this one started is we're gonna put a little bit of grass underneath his feet. Not a lot. Just remember with this, less is best and you can always add more. So I literally just put a little bit of green ink on the bottom with this blend, okay? So, that's all that we're gonna do for blending with green on this card, okay? So I'm gonna just set that here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab, so you guys each have two tags like this. They're the same size. One is for the background that you don't do anything with, and one is for the top. And so we're gonna do, as long as we have green open, we're gonna keep doing some green. I think that that one uses green as well, so we'll have to get to that one in a second, but. We're gonna do just a little bit of green along the bottom. So we're going to start off the edge of the paper again and work our way onto the tag. And it starts off by getting a little bit, but this is a really dark like ink. It's dark green and dark blue. So I do a little bit and you just keep adding to it. Okay, are you guys doing okay? I know some of you said you were okay. I know Melanie, I'm not sure if you're following yet or if you're still confused a little bit. I don't want anybody to wonder what's happening. So if guys gotta talk to me, let me know if everything's okay. What we're doing is we're doing our blending. So, and we're doing it for all the cards right away so that when it comes time to put the rest together, there's no blending that we have to keep pulling them out. Okay, I got a thumbs up, that's good. So the, the more color you add, the darker it gets. And you don't have to have it completely solid. And even if you look at my sample, I've got a darker on one side and lighter up there. Okay. So that's what we've got for that one. Now for this one, we're not going to do the green right away. We're going to actually start with the blue and work our way down. So this is all we're going to do for green right now. So what you can do is just shut up your ink pad and we're gonna set this off to the side for right now. We'll come back to the green. I have dominoes going on. Okay, so then we're gonna pull in do blue next. So grab, a, I know it's like the first time you use your brushes, you're almost afraid to because you don't wanna get them full ink. <laughs> so grab one of your brushes and we're gonna keep going with blue now. 
The green that I'm using is called Old Olive. Pear Pizzazz would work good too. Gar garden Green would work as well. Um, either one of those greens would be good. Um, okay, so now we're gonna keep going back to our tag here and we're gonna finish up the blue part of it. So what I do is I don't want to use my same piece of paper here because as I'm blending on here, I could pick up some of this green ink and I don't want to cross contaminate my colors. So I'm actually gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use this side to do the blue. And so the same kind of concept applies here. You don't have to push very hard into the ink pad and you don't want to grind your brush into the whatever you're coloring. So you wanna start soft and then if you're noticing that a lot of ink isn't coming off, then you just go back for more ink. So you can see that that barely put any blue on it. So, um, so your greens, your inks, everybody's ink pads are juicier or drier than others, right? So it also depends on how much pressure you put on it and like how much ink is in the brush. I thought that that's actually pretty dark. Um, so if yours is a little darker, it's okay. Um, everybody's are gonna look different. Everybody's technique for blending is different. I'm going in a circular, you can kind of see I'm going in a circular motion. By doing that, it's not putting lines on, like not getting streaky lines. So you can see what I've done is I've, I've gotten that far. Now when I get to this green area here, that's where I wanna be careful. I don't wanna be blending it into back into the blue. So what I'll do is I'll come up to it and then I'll lift up the brush and it looks like I'm doing circulars, but I'm kind of lifting it up lightly. Yes, Donna says here, light touch is best. So I'm picking up the brush, putting it this way, and then picking up the brush and putting it so I'm not dragging it because I don't want to drag the green up into the blue. It'll just give you a weird yellowish color. <laughs> so, and I'm trying not to get any lines. You can kind of see on this one right here, I've got a little bit of lightness yet there. It's just, it's hard to get them to connect without getting a lot of white and getting a lot of the bleeding going on. Okay, so and it's good to have different variations. It's the sky. The sky doesn't look all the same. You have white clouds and streaky clouds. And so you can always go back and add more, but you can't take it away. And if you want, you can do the post-it note technique and not have to worry about blending them. Mm -hmm. Right, Kelly did last week's Technique Thursday or the week before? She did a post-it, oh, this one, ha ha. This card right here. She did this Technique Thursday two weeks ago, I think, and she put a post-it note there so that you don't have that. You have a really solid line, which is quite all right, and mine too, that I used a piece of paper here to put that line so the blue didn't go into the yellow. So, but I was okay. I'm good like having it a little bit washy look like that. So. So I'm done with this tag and I am done with this green for this one. Okay, so that one's good. We're gonna move on to this one because this one uses blue for the sky back here. And this one, you're only leaving a little bit of room for the tan. So same kind of concept here. I start off and then I'm going in light little circles and I'm putting a blue sky behind our chickadee. So sometimes you get a little bit darker of an edge around the side that can look cool too. Don't worry about that if that happens to you. It's just, it's like the ink takes on the paper a little bit more on that open edge side. So I'm getting close and I wanna save some room for the sand. Hi, Jean. Um, I wanna save some room for the sand. So I'm not gonna go all the way down to the bottom here. I'm just gonna go up oh, in there. See, like that's what happens if you get a little dark and that's okay. Just gonna work that in. My chicken might cover up part of that. <laughs> so, all right. The darker you get it, like that's okay. Um, just know that you can't add, um, you can't take away ink really, you can add to it. So, so right there I've left I've got a little bit more than on that one, so I think I'm actually gonna go this way and try to bring that down a hair. 
And then when we get to our crumb cake, we'll finish off that. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So you're just creating this little sky background. Okay, so that was with our blue card. Okay, so that's good. Now we're gonna work on this guy. So on this one, it's this piece right here. So there's this little die, it's awesome. It cuts out these little seeds, it's so cool. I noticed I had tape on here when I did mine, so I got a little bit of adhesive residue there, so I wanna get that off. So on this one, the main thing is that I've got about one third sky and two thirds sand. So I'm gonna keep going with my blue paper here, and I'm gonna start at the top, and I'm gonna work, I'm building the sky. Eyes on the prize and blue in the sky. <laughs> I have blue on my finger that never washed off from last night. <laughs> we did, what, oh, 4th of July cards last night. That's what we did. So, all right, you guys can see I'm kind of always starting off the edge of my paper here. And I'm working my way down. So this one, it's a little less obvious because I put a fence and I put a barn there. So you're not going to quite see that line as much as um, you would have had that not been there. And this one, most of that line is getting covered up too. Okay. You guys doing okay? Who is blending right along with me? I'm curious. I know you probably don't even have time to comment right now <laughs> or, or put a like side, I'm curious. <laughs> so we're getting some sky going on back here. Okay, so if I look at this, I've got it right about where I want it. I might go just a hair right there. Okay, so now in my sky, you can see I went a little bit darker than over here. Okay, so that's all I wanna do for sky on this one. Oh, good, some of you guys are, good. So that's for that one. Now, we're gonna move on to this one. This, I had to throw in some shimmer paper. Shimmer paper is, oh, Ellen is too, Stacy. Okay, we got a good group stamping with me here. So this is shimmer paper. If you guys look at it in the light, it's got little shimmeries, and that is part of the paper. So on this one, I've got about, whoosh, just over half, maybe 60% is blue. So, oh, Angela did hers yesterday. Good job, girl. Okay, so we're starting at the top, and I'm working working it down to the bottom where the grass is. So this is one that has... It's a trifecta here. The blue, the green, and the brown all in one. So just remember, uh, go lighter. Oh, that could be Melanie. So you guys are using the brushes for the very first time. So they're not conditioned probably. And mine, like there's still some residual ink in there. So that very well could be why yours are lighter. Um, and all you got to do is just add a little bit more ink and keep going over it. The more you get, like you can see here, it's a lot, like I think you can see that that one's darker than that one. I did. I, you just keep adding ink and it'll keep getting darker on you, I promise. <laughs> okay, so I'm working my way down here. I'm getting that blue on here. And then when I get right about here, I'm gonna be very careful to not go down too low. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the green back and finish off the green on that, this one that we're working on. And then we're gonna do the crumb cake last. So I think that that looks about, about the height. So what's cool about the shimmer paper is that even after you add color to it, you can't see it in the camera, mm -hmm. But even after you add color to it, it stays shimmery, which is super, super cool. So the shimmers go through it. Okay, I'm happy with my sky on this one. Oh, no, I'm not. I want a little bit more right there. Okay, so we should have all of the blue done. Yes, Melanie, this is, it's shimmer white. So it is, a, it's not white, white. So when you look at them next to each other, the one on the right has a bit of a creaminess to it, and the one that is just regular basic white looks more crisp, but that's because this is the, sh it's called shimmery white. It's in the catalog, you can get it from Stampin' Up. I love it. I don't use it a lot, but I love it when I do use it. So that should be it for the balmy blue. 
So now we're gonna go back and we're gonna finish off some green here. So I'm, oh, Melanie made her cards already. Look at you go, girl. <laughs> so you gotta be careful with the green here because again, we don't wanna be swirling blue into the green. And so, oh, look at me, I gotta flip over here and we're gonna do green. So I'm gonna try to pick, I'm gonna go in and pull up and not swirl back down, if that makes any sense. And I'm still trying to do it so I don't get lines. We don't need, <laughs> Danny says you're an overachiever, Melanie. <laughs> Angela, do you have your cards done too? I'm curious. I know you said you did your blending yesterday, but I wondered if you pulled them together and actually got them put together too. So see what, I'm, I'm, I'm starting here and I'm going up and then I'm not dragging back down. I'm just kind of making some grass here and I'm not going all the way down because I want to save some room for my chicken to be standing in dirt. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a white that's a little lighter there. I'm okay with that. I'm leaving it because I don't want to get this weird color combination of green and yellow, whatever that makes. I don't know. Does green and yellow make... Green and blue make yellow? No, blue. Right. Green and yellow make light green. Okay. Okay. All right. So we should be done with all the green. So the next one, I've got one more sheet of paper here. Um, no, it's the hive. For the... I've seen the What's internet... The be happy. B E E H A P P Y. Oh, I'm Lord. Trying to upload to the drive. Oh, yeah. You need to. So, the internet. <laughs> Kelly's trying to get on the internet in the hive, you guys, and it's different. You guys know my internet issues, right? <laughs> the Carhartt picks up out here. Carhartt is my house oh. internet, and my hive internet is called the hive. And so, in the hive, you pick up one, and in the house, you pick up the other, but just not enough to actually get enough internet. Okay, so the last color that we're putting in here is the crumb cake. And now it's for some dirt. I got a bog. Oh my gosh. So not, and it didn't even leave a mark. I'm so That's excited. Amazing. That was awesome. So now what we're going to do is I'm doing the bottom first. Hi, Jennifer. I'm doing the bottom. And then I'm going to do my start at the bottom and pull up without dragging. So <laughs> she was so excited to make them. So they were so cute. So. Aww. I'm curious if anybody else is having issues. Deb has mentioned twice that it's freezing on her, but I continue to keep watching it. And it never misses a beat for me. So I'm not sure, Deb. It might be your internet. Um, so there's our one piece here is that. And then if we look at the back here, our chicken there standing in some dirt. So we're going to put a little bit of the crumb cake on the bottom of this inside piece. And this is just a normal basic white. Okay, so we have some dirt going on there. So now that set's done. We're gonna come back to this one and we're gonna put a little bit of dirt on this one. I don't know, you guys, I'm not freezing, so I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> so um, there we've got a little bit of the crumb cake on the bottom for that guy. I was doing the same thing. I was trying not to blend the blue with it. Um, it just started freezing. It's freezing on and off. Freezing for me too. Frozen too. Going in and out. Freezing a bit at the moment. Interesting. Oh, I had a work call today and they said that there was um, U.S. wide internet issues with people. Did you hear that? I didn't. Okay, so what? the people's internet, businesses internet was going crazy. Like there was a lot of outages across. You should Google it really quick. I will. Kelly's going to Google it because there was a lot of internet outages per my meeting. They said that um, all over the U.S. So crazy. Hmm. Um, and I'm not sure. So it could be that guy. Sorry. Um, I, but I continue to keep watching on my end and I don't see it freezing. I can't tell you why it is for you guys. But this is our last one that we're doing. So right now we're, we're blending. We're blend happy right now. So on the bottom of this one, we're just going to put some more dirt. Oh, I kind of went thick there. Oops. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, uh, near the bottom. <laughs> I noticed that's where I had my piece of tape. <laughs> so there must be some residual stickiness. So you guys might have the same thing because I know when Anna did it, she put tape. So now that I'm getting close to my blue, we're going to, oh, it's storming by Julie. That has a lot. When the, there's storms, that really interferes with it. As I get close to the blue, I'm pulling up from the bottom. Oh man, I just did it really dark there. Um, yeah, 
<laughs> so this brush is really taking on <laughs> the crumb cake. All right, so I'm not gonna worry about the line too much on this one because a lot of it gets covered up. <laughs> Look at my, <laughs> definitely a difference over that one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all right, it's okay. So now, now we get to pick, oh, and then this one I have, you guys grab your inside here for this one. I've got mine done, but this is what I would do. I would put a little bit on the bottom inside of your white, basic white mat here so that your chicken has something to stand to stand on. So, yes, Deb, we need more rain here too. Okay, guys, so all in all, all in all, Kelly says it's beautiful blending. All in all, that's what the blending is all about. So when I designed all of these cards, I thought, okay, all four of them are gonna have blending and then you guys are gonna get blending brushes and then you're gonna see what these blending brushes are all about in case you don't have them. So I believe we should have everything blended. Now that we have everything blended, we're gonna go ahead and pick a card and we're gonna put our first card to get to put together. But so I don't get confused, I'm going to put my pieces back in with my cards. So we're not doing that one first. And then this can go over here. And then this next one is, let's see here. So this one is the little egg. So I'm gonna put him back in here so I don't get confused with that one. You guys kind of have an idea which one I'm going for first, that one. So we're gonna pull this and put the other one away. So I'm getting my pieces out of the way that I'm not gonna be using right now. Okay, so now we're back onto a normal course of business. Mm -hmm. Business. We're gonna start making cards one by one. Okay, we got all the blending out of the way and now we have a little bit of stamping to do and assembly. So this one is a fun fold. If you guys didn't figure that out, <laughs> why don't you give them numbers? Um, I don't know. I've never numbered my cards, <laughs> but um, uh, uh, this is number one right now. <laughs> this one um, is number one. It is a fun fold, so it opens like this. It's not a crazy, crazy fun fold. It's got flaps on it. Uh, it uses basic white with misty moonlight, and the designer paper comes from the Dandy Garden. And so, in your kit, what you'll have, it, what you'll have is a piece of basic white and. The measurement on this piece here is six and three quarter by five and a half, and then I have it scored at four and a quarter. So it's gonna make a traditional A2 size card. So grab your bone folder. Blue is number one, yep. <laughs> All right, so now that you've got that started here, what else do you guys have in your kits? You're gonna have two bigger mats. One is Misty Moonlight, and the other one is Basic White. Uh, yeah, I have no idea, you guys. I wrote that PDF tutorial a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you what number they are in the PDF tutorial. <laughs> so <laughs> don't go by ones in the PDF versus what's happening tonight. Go by tonight. This is our first card that we're making. Okay, so we have here the Misty Moonlight is a mat, and then the white is going to go here. But before I start getting glue happy, you guys, don't be gluing anything yet. We're going to do some stamping. I'm just showing you what you have for pieces. Then you also will have a piece of um, Misty Moonlight that is going to be for your panel here. And this Misty Moonlight is five and a quarter by two and a quarter and then you have your piece of designer paper which is five by um, two okay so that's going to get glued there you also have a piece of thick white that this measures three and a quarter by four and a quarter and i have it scored at three and a quarter so what you can do is take that grab your bone folder and burnish your edge on that one and then this one is a three by three and it is embossed. You guys, on all of these cards, I use the Tasteful Textiles embossing folder. And so don't get glue happy yet. We've got to get our linen thread on here. So um, in your kit, you guys have five feet. I know we, I did this um, with the chicken and breakfast class. So five feet is enough linen thread to do all of your cards, okay? Um, the other thing too, I wanted to I'd bring you guys, I must have stamped my chickens already. So in your kit, you will have this chicken actually. Um, this is the one that we went with because it kept it all within the, there's an outlet back there, Kelly. I tried. Um, okay. There's, um, hang on, Kelly's trying to get <laughs> plugged in. Um, 
Can you take out any of those over there? I don't know what they all lead to. Um, the one on the top, you could. Okay. Kelly's mom, her computer's almost dead. And so she was trying to plug in under my legs and I'm like, why are you going down there? Oh my God, don't go. <laughs> so uh, you guys, sorry for the disruption. Sorry. Okay, sorry, yes. So in your little bit of entertainment there for you guys. Yes. So in your kit, you have a piece of white and that white is where you're going to um, stamp your chicken. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll stamp the chicken and then um, I always provide for you it also fussy cut, or not fussy cut, but like mm -hmm. die cut. So in this case, you'll have a piece of white, something about this size. All of your chickens are stamped in early espresso. So grab your earlier espresso or your brown pad here. <laughs> Julie's laughing. Uh, <laughs> so what you can do is you'll stamp your chicken like that so this one worked interchangeably with this as well so honestly whichever chicken you prefer um, to use it's quite up to you so in class everybody picked this crazy chicken that was dancing on one leg like it's ready to break its leg <laughs> so um okay so for coloring there's not a lot of colors that i use for the chickens we really only have in here yellow, blue, and a red. So if you don't have cherry cobbler, you could use poppy parade. I'm actually gonna go with this chicken because I think he's funky. And whoever gets this card will like whichever card they get. But the gobbledygook thing that's hanging here is red. And then his spiky top thing. <laughs> Hi, Kathy Beck. His spiky top thing is um, red. And then his nose, beak, I should say. Uh, is a yellow so just that's it that's all the coloring on um, this guy had you done him you could have colored in his feet with the yellow marker so in your kit you have a piece that is a white piece and it's also a piece that's die cut for you so if you don't stamp good on the die cut piece out already you could stamp and then just fussy cut if you don't have the dies okay so now the inside here for some stamping i have on here have a happy day so you can do something else if you like. Um, you could stamp on the inside. Um, let's see if I have, oh no, I don't. Have a happy day, go. So there's any other saying, if you guys don't have that, you could do anything you want, but we're gonna do have a happy day right down in the bottom corner here. And that's really crooked. <laughs> so we're gonna figure out which way it needs to go. And we're gonna go back and do the opposite. We're gonna make it go up and now look at that so you learn which where, like how you need to hold a stamp by stamping it <laughs> okay so that's it for the stamping here now in the stamp set though you could make this into a birthday card if you want there is in this stamp set you could put happy birthday you're still a spring chicken let's celebrate you there's so many different sentiments you could put in here if you wanted so what we can do is a little bit of gluing now so hey karen beagle's watching Nice. Kelly You're was supposed to be watching my kids. <laughs> Karen, or um, Kelly says hi, mom. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing is putting a little bit of adhesive behind two pieces to start. We can adhere our piece of designer paper onto our piece of misty moonlight first, and then this piece. You guys, I oh, I glued the right side. Haha. -ha. I was gonna say I wonder if I glued the wrong side. This one's gonna get glued on to the misty moonlight mat. All right, now. What we can do, so there is a piece of linen thread. That linen thread is about 10 inches, and you need to put the linen thread behind the back of the Misty Moonlight before it goes onto the white, because otherwise you have a hard time adhering it. And what I use to adhere it is the Terran tape. So you guys can grab your Terran tape if you like. Karen, how are the boys doing? Are they having a great time with Grandma? <laughs> so we're gonna put our Terran tape on here. And we're gonna prep that so that our twine can go. So how I do the twine, so you're about an inch up, not quite an inch. So I put one end down and then I can look at it so that it's straight. And then I attach the other end and now I weave it back and then back this way. So you guys just cut yourself what you need and then you're making yourself a double front here. And then I like to take the tear and tape and put it over the top to create that tear and tape sandwich, just like that. And then 
if you want, if your twine is too long, you can always just trim that off. If you leave it back there, it's okay. And now what we're gonna do is we can put a little bit more of adhesive behind this one. And now that's gonna go onto this white panel here. After you've folded it, it should, I'm trying to get it centered really nice. Can you tell? So let's put that right about. So it sticks where the tear and tape is and then where the glue is, it should wiggle a little bit. <laughs> They're making a mess for mommy. <laughs> oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. So now what we can do, let's glue this panel down right here and that's gonna go on the front of this piece right here. And because I'm using the liquid glue, it allows me to wiggle, wiggle with it a little bit. Now, the trick with this card is we have to get this panel glued down right now, and then we can put our inside in. And you wanna put it so that it's up high enough so that you aren't covering up the, uh, let's have a happy day. So put a little bit of glue on here. Tear and tape would work too. I wouldn't use tape runner so much like that mono adhesive tape runner. I feel like it'll fall off um, over the course of time. So this is flush with this edge here and I'm putting it maybe like right here. And so I'm just lining it up so it's along that edge. Okay, and that's creating the flap that way. Now you guys can go ahead and glue this in. So the trick was to make sure that um, that flap was put down before. Otherwise, it would have been over the top of this. So now this goes on the inside like that. So then it shuts like this. And now we have a circle left to put on. So grab your dimensionals. I would use three of them, of the bigger ones. And then we're gonna attach our chicken so in this kit, you guys will have some of the opal rounds. You should have three of the opal rounds. They weren't part of the goodie bag, but they needed to be added to the card because opal rounds make everything better. Opal rounds are my favorite. I think so. So for the chicken, I'm putting, um, I'm actually gonna do three dimensional. So my chicken's gonna be popped up at the top and then we're gonna glue his little foot down flat so that he's grounded. <laughs> Like that. I'm surprised you didn't call me out on that. You know what my embellishment my favorite is. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be dancing in the dirt. Dwight. He's going to be a doity chicken. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you guys should have three opal rounds. Oh, look at this. I have a random loose one right here. Okay. So this random loose one, the stick got stuck right there. And I don't want to waste it. So I'm going to grab a glue dot. And we're going to put a glue dot right behind it and we're gonna make it sticky again. So put one there and then look at this, I have five left. So put one there and one there. And as Kelly would say, voila. Voila. So that wasn't so hard. Oh, we forgot the little bow. So you have enough to make a little baby double bow. And I always like to put them on with a glue dot. So grab a glue dot and you're gonna put that right over the top of the two pieces. And then that's gonna go right there. Kind of pull your tails down. So I was nice to myself. I made my bow ahead. <laughs> so you guys didn't get to see it. So had you decided with that chicken, that would have worked just as well too. So you guys had options. Now, if you don't have any of the chickens, any kind of critter, flower, anything could fit on this circle piece. And I am so excited to see what you guys make. so versatile. Versatile. Like, cards. yeah, you don't have to do chickens with this. So, all right, you guys. I know that took a long time because we prepped for four cards all before this one. But now for the rest, we basically just have stamping chickens and sentiments and assembly. So we did all of the hard work ahead. <laughs> so this one is the, I think, oh most versatile that you could add whatever you wanted to the circle. So, okay. Oh, oh my goodness Kelly. gracious. Okay, you guys, I um, have cards up on my windowsill. And now and, you get to see them all. And now you guys get to see them all because they all just fell down. I realized you were so, waiting on me to... Oh, you're good. So we just had a Domino's, you guys. I have my purple chickens. This was made by Mo. 
So this card is always in front of me because I like to look at the purple chicken. So Mo, your card is right here. <laughs> so, all right, we'll put those back later. <laughs> Kelly is here. <laughs> Hi guys, I don't want you to forget about We me. don't want you to forget that she's here. <laughs> so, um, okay. Oh, we found a purple pastel too. I wonder where that oh, came off. Let's see. So we'll put that back. I don't know. Hey, it's it the lamb technique. It was, yeah, the lamb technique. Look at that. So that's, it. I know that didn't come from there. So, <laughs> okay guys, <laughs> that's it. We got one card done. It went out with a bang. <laughs> okay, Kelly's cleaning stamps. That's what she was <laughs> trying to re reach around to get the chamois here <laughs> without disrupting me. <laughs> that's what I was trying to do. It did not work. She just wanted you guys to know she was here. Okay, so we got one done. Woo! -hoo! Okay, did you guys like that? Was that good? <laughs> okay, we're all looking at Mo's card now. Okay, Whew, numbers. Okay, you guys ready? Are we ready to move on? Give me some thumbs ups and some likes if you guys are ready to keep this party going. Okay, so we're gonna do a mix up of the numbers. Let's see here, because I don't want you to think I'm pulling out the same numbers every time. So, you guys ready? I see a heart, we're ready to go. Let's get these markers out of the way. Put them right there. So we get them all spread apart here. Okay. First number, oh hey, we're all ready to go. Okay, yay, yay, yay. Okay, first number right here. All right, you guys, we're back to number 15. Now it's going slow though. Okay, so now my camera just did like the slow motion for it, slow motion for it. So I'm flipping it back and we're gonna make sure that we're good to go. Okay, there it is. All right, we're flipping back. Hand check. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Number 15. Yay. Okay, who's got a 15? Tell me, is there anybody out there? Everybody scream. Okay, number four, you guys. Here's artistic is the name of the dies. This is part of the expressions in ink um, bundle. So, yay. So that's the artistic um, expressions in ink number four. I don't think we had that last no. game. So that's, that's like good. my favorite dies. Yes, Mo. Yes, I am definitely enjoying that card. So um, I wondered if there were really purple birds, and I think there are. <laughs> so, oh, yay, here we go, guys. Number 18 is layering hugs. So I wasn't going to buy this one either. You guys, I say the same things that you do. I was like, I don't need this one. Nope, I'm good. And all it took was I saw one card where they covered up the word hugs. Not that I don't like hugs, you guys, I love hugs. But they covered it up and they put a piece over the top and they made it so that that flowery background could be used with anything. Love it now. <laughs> okay, we've got lots of asses rolling in. Okay, we have our batik again, <laughs> number seven, batik. Batik, botik. Okay, you guys, reverse, reverse. Okay, number 14. Seaside seashells, name of the, the die for this one. Friends are like seashells is the name of the stamp set. Number 14, seashell, seashell. I just dripped water on your computer. Oh, that's not a Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, we have number 10. Give it a whirl. Give it away. Okay, give it a whirl. Number 10. We're definitely using this for the next game night. Number mm -hmm. 10. We'll make one of those spinner cards. Okay, what do we have here? Okay, number eight. We have some STs, a whole bunch of STs rolling in. Number eight is Nature's Thoughts. Carryover from spring of last year, and then it made it to the annual catalog, and now it's in the annual catalog again. I'm going to be making a card with that this week. <laughs> All right, ST. Okay, look at this, you guys. Forever Flourishing is number six. One of my favorite die sets in the entire catalog because of all the foliage that you can make um, with your cardstock. Very, very cool. Judy Bobo's got ST. So does Jeannie Parker. Deanne's got STA. Look at you guys rocking here. Okay, let's see here. Let's pick this one. Oh man, we're back to cooking. <laughs> What you got cooking in the microwave? You guys don't want me to sing for you. I know that. Mm -hmm. Number 19. So um, Judy's got STA, Angela ST. Let's do this one. Oh man, our, our lucky number 13 is Grapevine. 
Grapevine. I never noticed that dye back here, but it makes a really big grapevine. Okay, my mom has grape. Yeah, um, we call they have grapevines back. They, she calls it her vineyard, but it's not really. A, it's just like one row of grapes. But my mom makes grape jelly every year. Oh my gosh, Angela's got S T A. Oh, here, let's try this one. Oh, here's our big cats. Number nine, big cats. Patricia S T A as well as. Um, Angela, you guys are rocking it. Okay, woo, Judy Bobo's got S-T-A-M. Let's see if this is the lucky number. Okay, you guys, Majestic Mountain. Carryover again from two years. I did a paper pumpkin alternative with this one, number 24, Majestic Mountain. Let's set that. We're making this squeeze on here a little bit. Okay, Dar's got S, yay, she's not skunked, woo-hoo. Anne's got S-T-A. Oh, man, here we have you guys. <laughs> I didn't know it, but I created two with the welcoming window. There's a number 20 and a 15. You guys, I must have loved this set so much that I gave it two numbers. <laughs> um, Liz got S-T-A-M. Awesome, awesome. So we've got number 20 for that one. Let's see here. Lynn Beasley was at S-T-A-M. Latokia's got S-T-A-M. Roxanne, S-T-A. Melanie's got S-T-A-M. You guys are getting lots of numbers. I'm just waiting to see if anybody is. We're just waiting here. Look! Lynn Beasley! Woo-hoo! S-T-A-M-P. So, Lynn, confirm what your numbers are here so we can see what lucky numbers you won with. And Kelly's going to confirm to make sure that nobody else has your exact numbers that won. So Kelly gave me a thumbs up. So that means that nobody else should have stamp on this hand. So Lynn, if you want to just confirm what your numbers are, we are going to be set with you being a winner, winner chicken dinner tonight. Ha ha, ha, ha. Dinner. <laughs> ha, ha you guys, I can be funny sometimes. Mm. And so, Lynn, when you're um, when you have a second, give us your numbers, and then what we're gonna do, guys, for those of you who are making cards, we're gonna make this one next. Number two, <laughs> number two is our funky chicken. <laughs> All right, Lynn's got 10, 15, 6, 20, and twenty four. Good game, good game. All right, Lynn, Lynn. I feel like a waitress sometimes. <laughs> so um, I'm curious if you remembered what I gave you on the menu for tonight for the prizes or if I need to repeat them. <laughs> so all of the bundles are still available right now. All the bundles include the Plentiful Plants, um, the art one, and the baby one, and the other one. <laughs> what was the other one? <laughs> Christmas sighting. Oh, yeah, Christmas one. Okay, so when you have a second, you can just <coughs> reference what you want. Okay, so you guys, this is the card that we're working on next. It is um, a book card. I love me my book cards. Mm -hmm. So you can do your book cards horizontally. You can do them vertically. So all in all, like, <coughs> this is what it looks like. You open it up. It's just folded at the spine, and then this piece will get put right in here. Hi, Luann Johnson. Okay, so we're doing a little bit of a book card, and I shouldn't have done that because now I just loosened up my little tails here. But I wanted to show you the inner workings of this. Okay, you guys, lots of little bits and parts in this one. You're going to have a piece of paper that you can use to cut out or to stamp your chicken and cut out, and you'll have also this piece for you to stamp if you want to just go straight to trying to stamp it. Anything but not the baby set. Nope. I'm going to do it at the end. Okay. Um, okay she said anything so but the baby set. Christmas time. Oh, man. That's hard. You're making us choose for you. I don't know. That's hard. <laughs> okay. Do you like flowers or do you want another Christmas set? Or do you want... What's the other one? Oh, oh the, the plants. plants. Do you want the plants? Just give us a little clue. Do you like plants? Do you like flowers? Or do you like... Um, chicken tonight, um, the, the <laughs> Christmas one. Okay, so as Lynn's telling us what she's like more geared towards, we're gonna start working on our card. You guys, lots of parts. You should have three of these little corns. 
You should have a little brown fence. You should have a stalk. And then you should have three little husks. I promise they should all be there. Just be careful opening up your kits. I made my mom double check. <laughs> And she tried her best. These little things. She hated them. When she was done, she's like, I don't ever want to see those things again. <laughs> Poor mom. Okay. So you guys have a piece of espresso card base. It's eight and a half by five and a half. It's scored at four and a quarter and five and a quarter. So an inch away to create where that spine is. Then I took this whole base and I ran it through the embossing folder so that you have the texture on one half but not the whole card. So that's super cool. It gives you a little bit of a textury look to the front. Then we've already done our blending. And so what will happen? Yep, flowers are fine. No more babies in our family. We huh? stopped at six grandkids. That's good. <laughs> okay, so she says flowers. Okay. okay, so you've already done your blending, or as far as I know, you should have your blending done. You're very welcome, Lynn. So let's just get something done. I know I tell you not to get glue happy, but there's no reason why we can't glue our blended shimmery white paper to our balmy blue mat. So we're gonna just adhere these. Oh, I know it's upside down, but that's okay. We're just adhering these together, just like that. Um, we, I, I got glue happy there, guys, did you tell? <laughs> I was like, let's not glue right away, and then I go and glue right away. So I always like to do stamping. <laughs> so, um, all right, so. When you have your piece of paper here, your mop top chicken is what we call him. You can stamp him on your piece of white like that. Or if you ever feel inclined to try to stamp on the die cut that I give you, you could definitely try to stamp that over the top. It might be easier to sometimes like just set him on there. Then you can see exactly where you're going with that. But I already, through the magic of TV, have mine already stamped and die cut. So... Um, that's done. So then what you have left is have a happy day. So did you guys remember on that last card that I stamped it? It was very crooked. <laughs> you don't get, you did all your blending and your, all your hard work and now it's glued onto your paper. <laughs> you can't afford to mess it up. So we're going to practice on the edge of this line here just to see which way I need to stamp. Okay. My H is low, so I need to bring my H up. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure I remember that when I take that into consideration here when I'm stamping. My H is going to go slightly more up, like clockwise, and, and we're just going to have it be what it is. Okay, so we have a, happy, have a happy day on there, and then we have our inside. Oh, Kelly, I need that chicken back because we got to stamp our inside now. chicken? Yep, funky chicken. So you can stamp your funky chicken on his dirt pile here, <laughs> right there. Okay, so now we got the stamping done. Uh, if you want to stamp a sentiment on your inside, go for it. You're welcome to. Um, how do you color the chicken though? That's what you're wondering. So I'm gonna show you guys, uh, I went to, when I was making this card, I literally Googled funky chicken. I did, I did do that. And I have in my screenshots, I saved it because this is the chicken. <laughs> That's the chicken that I found when I Googled funky chicken. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm gonna make my chicken just like that. And so <laughs> I saved it. So you could see how I tried to make my chicken look like that. Not that bad. So I tried and I'm like, just getting that black body mixed with the, it just wasn't so good though. I'm like, that's not pretty. So I left his body white, but this was my attempt at coloring this funky chicken. You guys, is that okay? I tried. <laughs> so you guys can color your chickens however you want. They're your chickens. You can name them as well. But I took my inspiration from his legs <laughs> and they were blue. <laughs> so I gave my chicken blue legs. And so my chicken here is getting blue legs and he's getting blue hair because that is the in thing is blue hair, I guess. So we're gonna give our little funky chicken mop top here some blue hair and it's gonna be yellow and blue. I'm just using balmy blue light. So, and then we're gonna make his tail feathers here in the balmy blue as well. I have light. I'm gonna pull in, I think, the dark balmy blue just to see what it looks like with a little bit darker of a blue. Um, we're just gonna go just some extra strands that are darker. Okay, 
So I'm coloring in my inside chicken and my outside chicken. And let's see what his feet look like darker. Okay, we're gonna do darker on one, but not the other. So then I pulled in some So Saffron. So that's what I've got going on. So Saffron, and we're gonna do, um, what do we wanna do? Some of his hair this color. So you guys, you could put your chicken with purple hair if you want, per, 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 not hair, but feathers. It's really whatever you want. <laughs> Be funky with your chickens. And then for his beak, I did the dark um, dark daffodil. So we're going to do a little dark daffodil nose. All right. How was that? <laughs> we got our chicken done. So let's go ahead and we can work on assembly now. So we can keep working on assembly. We'll go back to the card base. So our main objective here is that we want our linen thread to get secured right here on the inside binding of our card. And how I'm gonna do that is putting some tear and tape like we normally do. We're gonna create that little tear and tape sandwich. And we're gonna put that right in this binding part. And we wanna make sure that the tear and tape doesn't cross over where the score line is because you don't want adhesive coming over here. The more that you press down on the waxy paper, the easier that'll come off. And so you wanna just make sure you're not over the score line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut myself. So when you guys have your linen thread, cut yourself two pieces that are long enough. So that's how much we need. And then we're gonna take and cut that in half. So it's about six, a little over six inches. And so I'm gonna start with having two ends that are not close together. They're close together, but they're not touching. And then what I'm going to do, hi, Sarah, you missed game night tonight. Yes. So then I'm going to cross these like this. You see what I did is I just crossed them and I'm going to pick this up and we're going to secure these ends for the tear and tape. So the score line disappeared, Melanie. I had them all scored. They're scored at four and a quarter and five and a quarter. So if you look closely, it is scored, but what happens when you run the paper through the embossing folder after you score it, you kind of lose the score line. But I promise you, I scored all of them at five and a quarter and then I embossed them all personally. So um, there is a score line there. If you wanna go ahead and re-score it, you can. It's four and a quarter and five and a quarter. And so you can, and I know in class, I watched everybody do it. There is a very faint score line there. Now that you have that, your ends secured, then what you're gonna do, and the measurements, Melanie, all the measurements are in the PDF tutorial. I sent it to everybody last night and I sent it to everybody last week, Thursday. So every measurement um, was provided to anybody who registered for the class in the PDF tutorial that I sent. And I know Judy Bobo has it because she, <laughs> she knows what nor um, order the chicken cards were in. Okay, so now that you have your extra tear and tape there, what you can do is put a little bit of adhesive right here in the binding of what your book is, and then you're just gonna shut that, okay? So that's creating the book right here. Oh, Sarah, sorry that you got the summer job. I mean, it's good to have a summer job, <laughs> but kind of limits the attendance for game nights. So sad. Okay, so now you guys, what we did is we just created our book. So you can take your bone folder and burnish that again if you want, if you hadn't done that yet. But so we've just created our, our binding for our book, okay? Tape runner's not gonna work so good with that. You definitely wanna use a very permanent tape. Now what we can do is go ahead and adhere. We're gonna get glue happy now. We can put adhesive behind both of these mats here. And we're gonna glue one on the inside and we're gonna glue one on the outside. So the blue mat one. So the blue mat is the same size as the white. So this is gonna go right on the front of our card in between the score line and the edge like that. And then this guy can go on our inside. So people made these into Father's Day cards. I saw I had this as a chicken and coffee class or breakfast and coffee and chicken class earlier in the month. And I had people that made birthday cards, they made Father's Day cards, they made all different types of cards with these. Okay, so we can put now our fence 
so you guys, we can sell it at the end, I'm thinking. I think we forgot to sell it on the last one, <laughs> but okay. You should have three little corns and three husks, a stalk and a fence. And so we wanna make sure we get our stalk behind the fence. So let's work on putting our corn together. So I would definitely recommend using some sort of non-liquidy glue right now because um, you're gonna, <laughs> You're either going to love these corns or you're going to hate them. But I would, so the corn has indentation on the top and it's like a rough on the back. You want to put the glue dot on the front of it because that's now going to adhere to the back side of a husk. So you guys, this is tedious work here. So the glue dot went in the front and now you can stick it to the back of the corn. If you're trying to use liquid glue, you might hate me at the end of tonight because liquid glue is gonna get all over your fingers and make them really sticky and you're not gonna be happy then. <laughs> I, trust me, this happened live and in person, so I know it will happen online if you try to use liquid glue. Glue dots allow you to put the adhesive on and stick them where they need to go and not get glue all over the place and happiness happens. But what I'm doing is putting the glue dot towards the bottom. Don't put it all the way in the middle. It's got to go on the bottom of the corn husk, corn cob. And then that allows you to put that husk there. Okay. So now you have three cobs attached to the husks. Now what we're going to do is we can put them onto our stalk. So now you're going to put that glue dot on the bottom of your corn cob husk and then it gets stuck kind of right. So the first one goes there and then we're gonna put a second and a third one on. And so now I'm putting the glue dot on the back side and then putting it onto the husk so that they're going like diagonally off of it. So the, I love these dies, they're so cool. But you might not get into this little tedious stuff and pick, pick, pick. So you either invite your grandkids over or your kids over and they can help you put the stuff together <laughs> if you don't like this kind of work. But where do we want that guy? We're just going to put him there. So um, I think I have these in the wrong spots. So I don't know if I'm going to be successful. Oh, yeah. I should have gone down a hair. I noticed on my sample that I went down there. And then this guy. Oh, we'll see if that comes off. Oh, it did. Yeah. Okay. Then this one's gonna go here. So, okay. So now you've <laughs> you've got your your stock built. Okay. So now we have to figure out where the fence is gonna go and where the stock is gonna go because you definitely want to get your stock down. It's oh, it's thundering! Woohoo! Okay. So you want your stock down before you put um, the fence. So what I'm gonna do? I did not use dimensionals. You guys are thinking I'm crazy. I didn't use any dimensionals. I'm gonna put glue dots behind my stock so that I, again, don't have to deal with liquid glue. I mean, I liquid glue is great. You guys know I use it all the time, but I'm not going to try to attempt to do it with this. So my fence is going right where my grass meets my dirt, and that's going to be lined up, and I want my stock to be coming out that one fence post like that, so something like that. And then this is going to get a little bit, <laughs> like Sandy says, that the corn cobs are so, I know they're so adorable. Oh, Anne likes the tedious stuff. Okay, good, good. Okay, a little combination of everything is good. Having some tedious and not tedious, is like that last card was not tedious at all. Okay, so then this guy is gonna go lined up. Yep, I got it right about there. And then we're gonna put our funky chicken on mm -hmm. and he is getting popped up at the top and his feet are gonna be planted on the ground. So a little bit of liquid glue at his toesies right there. Now I saved my last bit of ribbon to show you last because you're probably wondering how I did a little loopy loop like that. So I didn't want to put a bow on a card that was had chicken on it. I don't know. I like I mean I put a bow in the last one, but this one if it was for a guy, maybe like not not having a bow would be good. So I tried to put something on without it being a bow, right? So what I did is I took some ribbon. This is about four inches and I folded it in half. So I got a little loopy on one end. And then I put that underneath 
And now I'm basically tying it like a knot. And so I know my fingers are in the way, but all I'm doing is looping. I So I have the loop on the one end like that. And you can have your loop on the top or the bottom, whichever. And then what you can do is just tighten it. And that's kind of where they meet. And so now I just added a little bit of twine and I didn't make it like a bow. I did something different. And I thought it looked kind of cool. It just was a random thing that happened. And so it just, I tied a little loop on there. So, okay. Yay, you guys, that's it. <laughs> I think we got this one done. Woohoo! So I'm gonna fix this because I will put this away and then I might not ever get to the fixing. And I like things to be in order. You guys know that. So let's put this back in order. Get some glue going there. Okay, nice. <laughs> nice. All right. So, you guys, two cards done. Woohoo! Number one and number two. Okay. So, are you guys ready for another game? We've got to get this party sorted. So, we've got two guys done here. Woohoo! I think that this is my favorite one. So, okay. Two done. <laughs> Poor little guy's never going to probably see a card. I should put him in somebody's card just to surprise you with him. Hmm. Okay. All right, all right, all right. The loop idea. Anne likes the loop idea. Cool. Yeah, that is cool. I like it. I'm going to name it the Bertram Technique. There you go. <laughs> Kelly's got her lamb technique. All right. Are you guys ready? We're going to make somebody else a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Did I save on twine by looping? I don't know. Compared to a bow, I would say. I would say compared to a bow, yes. Because if I normally make a double bow, like that was only four inches. You guys couldn't make a bow out of four inches very easily. Normally, when I make a bow, it's using that much. And I think for that loop, I use that much. And it looks less feminine to me, mm -hmm. um, having the loop and the ends versus a bow. And Oh, you guys, we need Stella. So Stella it up. <laughs> Stella, that's stock. I mean, I just said not to make it so feminine, but hey, whatever. I like the Stella. We're Stelling up. It's my card. <laughs> going to somebody who's going to win it next week. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. The Christine loop is what Kimberly said. Very good idea. Okay. We're going to start. You guys, we're ready, ready, ready. Okay. My, oh, you guys, I had top five dies before the catalog retired, and now I have to pick five new top dies. Number three is the scalloped contours. I love these dies. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so cool. Um, yes, the we are going to use them for the um, beauty of the earth class. Um, I have the scalloped dies in there. Oh, yeah, here we go. Majestic Mountain, number 24. We know somebody has that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, you guys, here's a new one. 21 encircled in beauty i just bought these dies i'm gonna have to see what oh i have an idea okay cool you guys i just thought of something so <laughs> maybe you'll see it when i make my card okay i was looking for some scalloped circles and this is the set to use to make scallopy circles okay cool number 21 okay Jeannie parker's got an ass linda's got an ass all right so let's grab this one our welcoming window number 20 Feline's got an S as well. Anne's got S. Dar's got an S. You guys, number one. Ooh, Here it is. Many layered blossoms. Oh, man. Okay, should I tell them? Should I tell them? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you guys. I've got some news. If you think that I don't have enough classes on my schedule, <laughs> <laughs> let's add another one. <laughs> so I'm starting next month, I have a, a class. It's going to be called Let's Just Stamp. It has no die cutting, has no embossing. And you think, well, what kind of a drab card is that going to be? Well, that's where the challenge. Oh, my gosh. Dar has S-T-A-M off of five numbers. That's awesome. So many layered blossoms with the stamp set. So it's basically the stamp set. I'm teaching this class with Diane Bogenhagen. I'm doing the online version, and Diane's doing the in-person version. And so you guys remember Kelly did a Technique Thursday? Well, we love this so much. We're like, you guys need to stamp with this stamp set. And then there's this card here, which is a little bit of a fun fold. Sorry, I'm interrupting our, pro our program with more cards. but <laughs> So that's one. 
And then last one, oh my gosh, is this one, the Bermuda Bay. And it's all stamping. There's no die cutting, no embossing, just stamping and cutting paper and adding some bling and ribbon. So that is coming up next month called Let's Just Stamp. <laughs> like just, let's just do it. And so, okay, 16, you guys, number 16 is Meadow. The stamp set is called Quiet Meadow. I used this last week in the Fun Folds class. It was um, a very pretty Fun Fold. It was like a pocket matchbook is what we called it. Ooh, number 22, Christmas Tidings. I have a class coming up. I don't know if I should share it with you. Next time we pull up number 22, I'll share my class for July with you. Um, the Tidings and the Trimmings is coming up for uh, sweet class next month, number 22. Yay, more classes. <laughs> so I'm not sure why it freezes on bingo, but honestly, Melanie, I think that it freezes every time I have class at some point. So Ellen's got S-T-A-L, that's awesome. Okay, cooking, you guys, this number is a hot number tonight, number 19. I think it's telling me that I need to cook more. Hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Kelly says she needs to cook more. Okay, Roxanne's got S-T. All right, number 18 is hugs. Hugs, hugs, layering hugs. Oh, look at this, you guys. We got so many right here in this row. Number 18. All right, let's pick this one. Oh, I like this one. Number 11, you guys, my beautiful trees. Save the date for July 1st. That's where we're gonna be doing this sweet class. I don't have the cards here. I actually started cutting the cardstock for these. I sent an email on it today. Latokia's got us. Woohoo, she's not skunked. Nice, nice, nice. All right, so Anne's got us. Oh, here's our seashells by the seashore, number 14. Number 14, seashells. We did that card for the May class. Danny just ordered the hug set, so she needs ideas. Yes. Oh, that would be a good sympathy card with the flowers like that. So, okay, let's see here. Which one do we want? We're going to pick from the middle. Oh, our grapevine is hot too, number 13. All right, Carmen's got STA. Deanne has STA. Grapevine is number 13. Oh, Latokia, good job, ST. What do we have left here? Let's go for this one. Oh, Nature's Thoughts. Number eight, Moe's got ST. So nature's, oh, Stacy and Patricia have S's. They are not skunked, woohoo. Hi, Helen. We're playing, we're making cards and we're playing games. Yeah, everybody had to pick five lucky numbers that registered and whoever has their five numbers called gets to pick a prize. Okay, picture this. Angela, Patricia both got the ST. Deb has got STA. Number five, you guys, picture this. We're getting lots of numbers. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Latokia and Jeannie are both at STA. Oh, man. Faye's got STA. Oh, here's our number two. This hasn't been called since the first game. Brilliant Wings dies, number two. And STA. Oh, we got so many people of STA. Holy Moses. Okay. Here's a new. Oh, no, Peach. We had that one in the first game. 17. I got to make some room here. 17 for the peaches are for me. My dad's loving peaches. He lo He's a peach fanatic. So my mom is making peaches, peach pie all the time. Not all the time, but whenever peaches are in season, she makes the peach pie. Deb Norman. Oh, does Carmen have it? Carmen, Carmen, tell us what your numbers. I see you wrote S T A M P. So let's see if she's got. Mm, yep, number two is called. Okay, twenty-two. Oh yeah, twenty-two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. give us your numbers, Carmen. Oh, we've got so many S T A Ms, you guys. H like, how many people have S T A M? So how many people? It's a lot. A lot. A so, lot. A lot. Oh my gosh! I think we have. So Kelly's gonna confirm too that Carmen has it yeah. in her records. Moe has STAM too. Oh my gosh, you guys, so many of you have stamp. One of the ones, what? No. No. Oh. Was she close? Mm -hmm. I think she 
Okay, I'm waiting. We're just waiting here. We want Carmen to see. Is Leslie also? I think so. No, maybe? I think so. Just updating things. So, oh, Carmen's here. Perfect. Two, five, 11, 16, and 22. All right, my dear, what was the last number you called? Oh, you guys, what was the last number I called? Uh, Karen Beekle says it's finally raining. Yes, here too. It's raining here too. So congratulations, Carmen. So the I don't remember what the last number called. Was it number two? I don't remember. Kelly's asking me what the last number that was called because she's trying to keep her There's records. One more. Leslie McMinn, I think said So I think though, I didn't know if she, is Leslie McMinn watching. I'm not sure if Leslie's watching because I haven't seen her commenting at all. We also showed that Leslie's got well, Leslie's got it, but I didn't hear from Leslie about not being. Phil, oh, Feline says 17 was the last number called. Okay, so then we're good. Yep. So we got a good bingo with Carmen. We sure do. All right. Not a bingo. We got a good stamp. Uh -huh. So Mo saying two was the last number, and Jeannie oh. saying 17. So. I'm pretty sure it was seven. Yeah. Yeah, because you were talking about your dad. I was talking about peaches and my dad. Yes, it was two. Okay. <laughs> you guys, the controversy between two and 17, which was the last one. I I think it was 17 as well. But either way, Carmen's got it. She, she's she got a good bingo. We went off of all of her numbers and she's got it. I don't think anybody else is saying here that they have it. So we think we're good to go. Woohoo. All right, guys, we're on to card number four. No, three, no. <laughs> not to confuse you. Okay, card number three. Okay, we're gonna do this puppy next. Okay, so pull out all your pieces. Woohoo! Can you reread? Um, no, I, I can't go back and reread my comments. I would have to take the video and search for it. And honestly, it doesn't matter what the last number of last was. Kelly just wanted to make sure she highlighted it to double check that we weren't missing anybody. So we don't care what the last number was. That wasn't really what the question, why we were worried. So it was just that she didn't log it. So no. Nope. So, all right, you guys, in your kits, grab your kit for this card. We have here the good egg. Okay. So... This is what we gotta go with. Um, let's see here, we got an egg over there. So you guys should have a stump. You should have your piece, your tag. So this is from the tailored tag set. You should have two tags, one white one and one colored now. You'll have a piece of wood designer series paper that'll go at the bottom. You have two pieces of white. One should be having a little bit of color on the bottom because um, you've already blended it. You have a piece of balmy blue, and this is also embossed with the Tasteful Textiles embossing folder. You have a little piece of white paper about this big in your kit, and then you also have a little die cut like that. So it's for your little egg, and then you have a piece of uh, espresso paper. It was 17, I thought it was. I felt like we went butterflies to peaches, mm -hmm. and we were talking about my mom making peach pie for my dad. So anyways, good call. So we've got eight and a half by five and a half, Scored at four and a quarter. So take your bone folder and burnish that. And let's do some stamping so you guys can see what we got for stamping. We didn't have a prize pick yet, correct? Oh, Carmen, what prize do you want? Mm -hmm. We got all wrapped up in the numbers. We got all excited about what the last number was. And then, um, <laughs> and then we didn't remember what Carmen picked. So Carmen, you're gonna have to let us know what your prize is. Okay, so you guys have a piece of white about that size. And then we're gonna be stamping your a good egg with a little egg. And we'll grab our brown. So we're just gonna do a little stamping. And we're gonna put that here. Oh, don't worry if you get a halo because it'll get die cut out. But don't do that on your inside piece. Just a light little pressure is good. Okay. So that's good. Let's stamp off so that he's ready for cleaning. And then your good egg is gonna get stamped on our tag. Remember to practice to make sure you get it because you get one shot in the night. Okay, one chance to make it a good first impression. So I'm gonna go right about here. 
No, don't get a halo. Oh, she wants the Christmas one. Woo! -hoo! Okay. I love that Christmas set. Oh, yes. There we go. Okay. That's done. You guys, that's it for stamping. <laughs> Hopefully that didn't disappoint you, but that's all that you have to stamp. <laughs> now we get to assemble. So a uh, little assembly. Oh, we got to do that. So Kelly, yes. I'm trying to think where I might have some linen thread because I did not mm. put um, linen thread um, in this kit. So I gotta think about linen thread okay so what you guys want to do first is grab your piece of designer paper and then you're going to adhere it to your piece of balmy blue okay so a little adhesive and that's going to go at the bottom now i always line up two edges so a left side and the bottom and then i always check my last side in case i went over because if i went over then I can take my scissors and just trim that off, you guys. I try to be a little more generous by a hair uh, with designer paper so that it's not too short and that you're having to trim the actual mat. So what we do is we just trim off that side. And then if you could grab that out of there for me, yep. that would be awesome. So then what you can also do is if you want to stamp a sentiment on the inside, of your card you definitely can before you adhere it because then if you don't like it you can flip it over but what we can do is put that on the inside well fabulous vanna white got some linen thread mm -hmm. for me thank you very much then for the linen thread i'm gonna take just as much as i need which is about a half inch wider than the card mat here and then I do is I take it and I fold it in half and then I cut it. So now I have two pieces and I'm going to prep the back with tear and tape so that we can adhere our linen thread because the linen thread goes behind the balmy blue mat right about here and here. Okay, and so now we have two pieces that can hear it thundering out there mm -hmm. all right so we basically put two lines of linen thread and now they've adhered to our tear and tape and so you can just put a little bit extra tear and tape to secure them now this other white mat is the same size as your inside white mat and so grab that and we're going to adhere our balmy blue mat to the white mat and then that will go on to our card front or our card base so a little bit of white just sneaking out here like that and then flip that over so you guys also in this kit you'll have three more opal rounds so they were not part of your goodie bag uh, we figured they'd get lost three little or six little opal rounds would get lost in the goodie bag so we just put them in with your card kits like we normally do so now we have our base here so I don't need him but we need this stuff now so the tag part so what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to cut yourself some more linen thread so if you look at this in detail you can see that there's four ends coming out. And so how you do that is you're going to take about that much times two and you're gonna cut yourself two pieces. So they're about four inches, maybe three and a half, four inches of linen thread, two of them like this. You're gonna take it and fold it in half so you have this little loop right here. You're gonna take that little loop and push it through both of the tags from the top. You gotta do it from the top, otherwise it's not gonna have the nice loop in the front. So you take that and you push that through, you open up the loops, and then you're gonna push your tails through the loops. Now, if you wanna just do one, you could. You could do three pieces of linen thread and then you end up with six tails. If you do four, you end up with eight tails. So whatever, whatever it is, that you want, you can just double it. So that's how you put them together. 
So I did secure them down. I put a dimensional, a dimensional underneath the white. Now, Judy Immel in class, she stamped another little chicken down here, or a little egg, and she made it so when the tag moved, you oh, could see the guy. Cool. So that was a cute thing. I didn't want to deal with it. So I, <laughs> I just an idea for you, but because I thought it was a super cool idea. A for effort, A Judy. for effort, Judy. So then what I did is I kind of secured that with a glue dot. And then we're going to just put a little bit of adhesive behind the one tag. And I'm going to secure that onto the card front. And it's kind of not centered like up and down. I pulled a Gina and I have it a little bit. Um, so I normally go up and down straight and, and left and right. And Gina always goes diagonals. So I have it. So it's not my normal way. Mm -hmm. So that's good. And then our stump is going to get put on with a dimensional. And that's going to go right about here. And then our little dude, I put a dimensional. <laughs> he doesn't really have a head. <laughs> but I was going to say I put it behind his head. <laughs> and then I put a little bit of liquid glue underneath his feet so that his feet are grounded on the stump. Oh, we got to color him too. He, he does have um, toes that are colored. He does have little toes. So his little toes are going to be Daffodil Delight. Woohoo. Okay. So then the last thing on this card are the opal rounds, which are oh, I'm sorry. way over yonder there. So perfect. You guys, this, nothing makes me happier than finishing a package. Just ask Tyler. Um, I love, I'm going to actually, I don't know. I want to move this down here. Is it stuck? Oh man, it's stuck. Good. I want to move it down. Um, it's still sticky. I want to move it down a little bit. So we're going to put it right there because I want to not have to cut my tails so long. So there, I love throwing away packages like shampoo bottles and toothpaste mm -hmm. containers. Does anybody else like that? Just, it gives me satisfaction to be able to throw out the one bottle because I've already got the next bottle stored yeah. and now it's created room in my cupboard. So you guys, when I can finish off a pack like this, it just makes me happy. Hoorah. <laughs> Hoorah. Because then I have the next one ready to go, right? Okay. Garbage. Okay. So you guys, all you have to do is trim your little tails at the top here. So I moved my, did you see that you guys caught? I moved my tag down. I just pulled it right up and moved it down. And so I didn't have to trim as much of my tails then. So that was an easy peasy card then, right? So now you get why I wanted to do all the blending first because it just got it done out of the way. And now we've got our third card done and we have card number four left to do. But you know what that means? It's time for another game. It's time to win. So these are the three we have done and we saved my second favorite one for last. Okay. All right, so we got three done. Are you guys ready for um, game number four? Game number four is just about ready to start. We're gonna put our tape back and get situated. You guys give me some thumbs ups. Give me, oh, he Ann says it's a cute card. This is another one where if you did not have the chicken set and you had a little flower pot or some sort of Oh, that would be super cute on the stump. Yeah, a flower pot on the stump. And then you don't have to put your good egg. You could put thank you. Hello, I love you. Like, you, you, you're awesome. Anything on there. So, okay. So, we're just at the point where you guys are watching um, me cut my tails. Huh? Kimberly likeies. Yay. I like you like you long time. Okay. I'm going to mix these up good. I think we've seen about all the numbers at this point. All right, and you're getting, we're using the chalk marker last. I saved that card for last. All right. Cool beans. And Kelly's working away at stuff for oh, me. Yeah, you're awesome. You're, She's you got a lot of to catch up on when we're done. <laughs> okay, first number. Let's see what it is. Oh, number six. Forever flourishing. I love this die right here. I use that tomorrow night. If you guys are looking for something to do, you can watch me live. I'm doing ink, paper, scissors with the pansy set. So we're going to make these four cards tomorrow. And that Forever Flourishing, I used it, one of them. And I actually cut it apart and I used one on that card right there. So these are going to be live in the hive tomorrow at 5 p.m. Okay, so Forever Flourishing, number six. Let's see what this one is. Number 22. 22, we've got Tidings. Christmas tidings. Lots of S's rolling in. 
Okay, number seven. Number seven is Batik. Batik. <laughs> number 16 is Meadow. Number 16 is a Meadow. It goes with the quiet Meadow. Like it. That's where that butterfly comes from. Okay, um, so for the beauty class, we're using that butterfly. Our number 20. Number 20, the window flower box. Woohoo, I like that set. Hmm, you guys, which one shall I pick? This one with the chickens on the back. How about that one? Oh, it's big cats. <laughs> I was looking for chickens, but it's big cats, our number nine. Okay, Carmen's got ST. Ah, Danny's got ST. Jeannie's got ST. Hi, Karen Wetstein. Encircled Beauty Dies. Number 21, Deb, STA. All right, Encircled Beauty is number 21. That's the next number. So, when I'm looking at my phone, is there's just two of them. So, I'm six, seven. I'm five ahead. Oh okay. Good. Yeah, so we got a little delay going on with the, the video. So, ah, Anne's got ST. Dar, ST. Roxanne, ST. Jean Terwilliger, STA. Dar's got STA. Woohoo. Okay. Anne's got STA. Wow. I couldn't believe how many in the last game had STA. M. That mm -hmm. blew my mind. All right, guys. Number 10 is give it a whirl. Give it a whirl with the spinner card. Oh, we're going to be in September making a spinner card, and we're going to be reminiscing of our summer past. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Don't even say that. Don't even say it, right? Oh. All right. Oh, here's our cooking. Got, you guys are going to be so sick of me. Got rice cooking in the microwave. Uh, little Travis Tritt for you, I think? <laughs> Question mark. All right. Oh, Deanna's not skunked. Good job. Stacy's got an S. I like it when at least we get some S's. Oh, here's our number two. Our brilliant wings. Dies. Number two. Number two. All right. Kelly, how are we doing? We're getting close. Are we? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to start to see some STAMs come through here. Oh, Faye got the S. Jeannie Parker's got an S. Linda's got an S. Woohoo. Okay, we've got, oh, Deb Norman's got STAM. Okay, so I've got number 18. The next one, Sending Hugs, Danny's most recent purchase. <laughs> Danny, I would love for you to make a card with it and send it to like me a picture so I can see what you made so I can get some inspiration. <laughs> so I do know there's these ornate dies that have a rectangle die cut and that rectangle die cut fits really nicely over that. And then you can stamp on that rectangle and you could stamp anything you wanted. <laughs> Woo, Anne's got S-T-A-M. Angela's got S-T-A. Linda's got S-T. Oh, here we've got our grapevine. Number 13, our grapevine. We'll stick him right there. Number 13 is that number. I don't know if you guys can see that. Number 13. All right. How are we doing? I know I should probably give you guys some time to get caught up to me. Patricia's got a T. Judy Bobo, ST. Oh, I see a STAMP for Deb Norman. Okay, Deb, let's let's hear your numbers. Write them out. Tell us what you have so we can confirm. I'm going to have Kelly confirm that no one else is that we don't have to wait for anybody. Kelly just gave me a thumbs up. So all we need for Deb to do is tell us what numbers she has. And confirming them, and then we're gonna get on to our chicken dinner here. Oh my gosh, it's so funny because the chicken is eating its dinner. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. ha. ha, ha. And she has the choice between the babies and the perfect plants. Oh man. So once um, you figure out or tell us your numbers, Deb, it's between perfect plants, oh, two, and the seven, 13. 20 and 22. Good job. We got a winner, winner, chicken dinner. So you're between the plants 
and the baby. <laughs> it's all about the baby. Either you're a plant mom or you're, you're a plant mom, mom or you're a baby mom. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. Well, while Deb is figuring that out, pull out all your bits and parts because there's a lot of them in this one as well. You're going to get to experience the building of the corn again. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So pieces in your kits, you guys. This is card, the fourth card, number four. Um, you have a piece of espresso, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Deb says perfect plants. Okay, so you got that scored. So good choice, good choice. No more babies. Mm. So I really thought that like somebody would be all about the babies, but nobody wants the babies. I think they're pretty cool. So it's going to go down to the last person that doesn't have a choice that is going to be the babies. I feel like... Chicken tonight? There's probably... <laughs> You. There's probably some versatile uses for the mm -hmm. baby yeah. that we can discover. Okay. Okay, guys, we're gonna do. We're gonna get a little glue happy here because um, I've done my stamping. So just so you know, what you need to do is you either. So you got a piece like this, and you have a piece that's big enough to stamp your chicken. You're gonna stamp your chicken and color its comb and its gobbledygook in a red and his little baby beak. There's a little, little beak right there. You can color it in a yellow, okay? I also stamped my chickadee on the dirt on my inside. And then you have a piece of crumb cake, matte four by five and a quarter, also embossed with a tasteful textiles embossing folder. If you did not see now how many times I use tasteful textiles <laughs> embossing folder in the course of my life, especially four cards in one class, I'm, <laughs> I can just use a lot. Then this piece right here too, we can glue. So we can get a little glue happy um, because I know a bunch of you have done your stamping already. So we're gonna save a little time because I'm not gonna re-stamp my stuff. I know I just looked at the clock and I'm like, whew, or I've been talking. It's all that two. blending. Yes, all that blending took a bit. So that's good. Um, Angela said baby was number three on her list. Okay. Oh. Okay, so, oh, Mo says, Oh, Mo says the baby one is the top one on her list, and she oh. has her fingers and toes crossed. Not toes, per se, but always fingers and toes crossed. So, yay! There's still a chance. Okay, so this guy's going to go on our inside. Now, you guys are probably wondering what this piece of yellow is all about. You guys have a little rectangular piece. I used a, a, a layering oval that I had as a scrap. That's what has to go behind here to make mm -hmm. our seeds show up. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue around that and cover this up. So if you don't have a lot of wiggle room, just use tape, just to tape it down. All you're trying to do is create some yellow seeds back here. And then now this can get glued to our crumb cake. And it's coming together. I put a bigger crumb cake mat so that you could see more of that embossing behind. All right, fence and sign and coop. Okay, the coop de coop. This is where your goodie bag chalk marker is gonna come in handy. So you're gonna take your chalk marker and you're gonna draw little white lines around to highlight on the chicken coop. Oh man, I gotta show you this too. I Googled <laughs> chicken coop. I got my inspiration from the Google, and this is what the Google showed me. And that's why we have a red chicken coop <laughs> with white lines. <laughs> Your mom would be so disappointed that you had to Google that. Well, I just wanted reassurance. Okay. I could go to my mom's chicken coop at the house, and I could see that. But I wasn't there, and I just needed reassurance. <laughs> yeah. So... I'm just drawing white lines. So I'm curious, how many of you have a white chalk marker? And this is a second. Um, if you do, is yours dried out? Because I had a couple people bring their white chalk markers to class and they were dried out. So they don't last forever. If you do all round and you want it darker, just wait for it to dry. And then you can go back over it. And I don't know if you guys can see that how more pronounced where I went the double time. It just makes it darker. So you can do a round two with your white chalk marker if you want it darker. Okay, just 
It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of scribbling it on here. Jean said that hers is dried out. So they that is exactly why I put fresh ones in everybody's goodie bag because I did not want anybody to have um, a dried out white chalk marker and you couldn't do your, your chicken coop like that. So Jean's is dried out. Oh, Madar had hers and it worked for a little while. So, or has, um, it worked. That's good. That's good. Okay. Oh, I want one more line down here on the side here. I just noticed I missed this little area. And then I think I'll be good. Then, so that'll go there. Then you have your fence and your post. Now, this is where I mentioned in my PDF tutorial, a, a cha um, I use an espresso marker and I just drew in some lines in the fence because if you didn't have the lines, it would get washed out a little bit. So what I did is I just took a brown marker and I traced in some of the grooves of the fence just to give it a little more of that texture. So that will go there. And then our picket fence here. In the stamp set, there's a stamp that says, Hey Chick. And so I stamped that there. Now what I would recommend, and I did this for people in class, I said stamp on the back of it first to get a feel for how it stamps and then go for it. And so then you get two chances at it. I wonder if you could refresh a chalk marker. That's a good mm. question. So I didn't do all the lines with this fence. I just did a few of them and just make sure, like, just fill it in a little bit, but not, don't go too crazy. I did one of them and I did all of the lines and it looked too much. So I just did a few of the lines. Okay, so that's the espresso marker. Now for my barn, my barn, my chicken coop, I put one dimensional at the top and then I'm gonna plant it so it's flat on the bottom like I normally do. I like the top popped up and then we're gonna pop the legs down. It's the small little details that make all yes. the difference. So it's popped up on the top and it's flat on the bottom. So it's grounded, exactly. So we gotta get our fence is gonna go right about there. And then our, our chicken coop kind of goes right about there. So that's gonna sit right there. Now we can get a little bit of glue behind this fence. You guys, I think that, I hope that you're happy that we did all that blending in the beginning versus pulling all that stuff out every time. It saved some time, I'm sure. I think it did. Let me think that it did. Okay, so we have that. Let's get our chicken dinner down. So I popped up her butt <laughs> and her feet are planted. So she's got her little tail in the air here. And then we're going to pop up her head with a little dimensional. So she's like, oh, scoping out her meal right here, her, her dinner. So that's like that. So you can see that in here, they're close. Oh, I put her down a little bit more, but that's good. All right, back to our corn and our fence. Same concept applies for this one. Oh man, I'm missing a husk. Kelly. Oh no. There's a husk over by the stamp set where the remote controller to the air conditioner is. Okay. There's some husks there. So I had people, and get this guys, in class, people, two people were missing husks. And I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, yep. I go and cut two more husks. And then they go and find their husks. <laughs> so I've got some extra husks. I promise you, my mom does a very good job she does her best. That's all she says. I did my best. But they're usually there. They stick. Everything like sticks to the back of stuff. There's static electricity galore that goes on. So I'm putting my glue dot on the end of the corn on the front. And oh, I need the husk deer. Oh, sorry. Brought you the wrong part. That's okay. So, oh, and now that's not going to go there. Thank you. Okay, so this guy's going over there. We got this guy ready to go on our husk. And then right there. So we're just assembling our corn. Pretty soon the chicken's gonna be eating this corn off the husk on us if I don't go faster. Okay, so that gets on here. And did I do that again? I did that. I wanted him down. 
further. So luckily I didn't press really hard. So that should just pull right up. We're gonna put that down that one. And then this little dude goes right here. Okay. Oh man, sticky, sticky. Okay, get off of there. Okay, so we've got our corn and stalk and husk assembled. So that kind of gets planted right about here. Um, glue dots on that one too. I would probably recommend putting a couple glue dots. Glue dots work like a charm. I use them a lot with adhesive. I'm not adhesive. <laughs> with embellishments, with putting bows on. Um, I'm also going to just put a little dot of liquid glue right on the end here, just so that my corn, so on the other husk or the other stalk, it was tucked behind the fence post, but this one is gonna be off on the side here. So that's growing out like that. And then our sign is popped up with two dimensionals on the top. And then it has a little liquid glue, so it's grounded on the bottom. Here you guys have seen more times where I've glued the bottoms flat and popped up the tops. All right, so that can sit right there. Grab your Stella pen. Be careful, so you don't want to Stella over the top of the words because you might blend them around. Um, yeah, Melanie, the internet is nationwide. <laughs> did you ever look it up? I did. Yeah, yeah. there definitely was something going on. Oh, Stacy just said congratulations on my. Okay, you guys, I was. Um, I just, yeah, I don't know if anybody really knows this. I just hit $300,000 in career oh, sales like nice. yesterday. Isn't that awesome? So thank you to everybody. So Stacy, I don't know. You just, maybe Kelly Atchison, Atchison just posted that, but yes. I think at the beginning of this live, you got tagged in something in a demonstrator thing. That's okay, nice. cool. Yes, I just hit it. Yay. Woo <laughs> I thank everybody for their love and support. I did it. I was working on that since December. Oh, so, okay, back to my card, sorry. <laughs> I get like squirrel. <laughs> so you guys, that's it for this little dude. So that wasn't so bad, right? Yay, our fourth card. Thank you, everybody. So this is the fourth card. So let me pull them all in. <clears throat> these are the cards I'll be giving away next week. So these are our four chicken tackles. Chick are you guys sick of me saying chicken dinner yet? Mm -hmm. So these are what we've got going on. Did you have a favorite? Oh, let's hear it so you can see it like that. Do you guys have a favorite? I'm always curious what you guys like the best. So I don't know what it is. Oh, Kelly posted it at the beginning. Okay, cool. So thanks everybody for the congratulations. Yay, woohoo. I would have to say, not that these are bad, but I would have to say these are my two favorites. There's something about the stalks with the corn. And oh, I wait, you like the the very fussy ones. Yep, I like the fussy ones. And if I had to pick, oh, I didn't color his hair. Um, if I had to pick, I could have sworn I colored his hair. Um, if I had to pick, I would definitely pick this Polish rooster. I think that's what he is. My mom calls them the mop top heads, and my parents have um, they have a chicken like this on the farm. So yay! So you guys are liking the blue one, the book. Okay, that's good. So, the blue one, my favorite color. Mm. Okay, yeah, okay, so we did good. We got all four of these cards done in under two and a half hours. We have one more game to do. And lots of prizes. And then we're gonna do some door prizes. So we're gonna kind of wrap it up here in a short order. <laughs> so Brenda says that her husband now says chicken dinner. Thank you, Christy. Ha 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 I love it. I that's kind of funny. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, Brenda. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Ready for some numbers and the blue. So Lynn likes the chicken coop. Feline likes number three so far. Number three, I think, was the good egg. Mm -hmm. Okay, you I go. think that's my favorite. The good egg. Okay, I like that it says your good egg, and then it's got just a little egg with a crack in it. <laughs> okay, you guys like them. They're cute. All right, we're going to pull out our numbers. And what is going to be our first one? All right, let's pick the one with the purse back here. Number four, artistic. It's here. Artistic is part of expressions in ink and number four is the first one woohoo okay 
Oh, you guys don't like the babies so much, except for <laughs> well, Mo. That's the prize. Mo loves it. So let's hope Mo has a good shot. Okay, scalloped contours number three. Scalloped contours dies is number three. You guys, this isn't one that I've given a lot of love is the floral squares. And Feline, I can't wait for you to get your kits and for you to make them. Oh, I, so, I have a couple things I want to make. So you can tell everybody's watching at different times because um, I don't have any numbers picked here, but two people have S's mm -hmm. already. So that's how crazy the timing is, guys. It's mm -hmm. And that's why I'm really glad we're doing it the way, the way we, we are doing it. Yep, exactly. So it gives everybody a shot. So, all right. Okay, I was going to do this one next with the all squared away. Number two is the brilliant wings. Look at this, you guys. Two, three, and four. Oh, my goodness. All in a row. What are the odds that we get that consistent number action going? <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Beautiful trees. I love it. You guys, July 1st. Mark those calendars. I still have 14 kits left unaccounted wow. for. So... 14. Melanie, I'm not sure what you're asking what number. Well, we have 2, 3, 4, and 11 at this point. Yeah, so I'm not sure what you're referring to about the numbers we've called or something else. But um, oh, I am a little bit ahead of you, so I'm not quite sure what number you're asking. I always like to try to answer questions when I see them. But you guys have about 14 spots on this one left. So if you are on the fence, get off the fence. <laughs> we don't like those splinters. Carmen's got ST. Oh, you guys, here's our number 20. 24. 24 is the majestic mountain. 24. Ellen's got ST. Ellen was a winner last time. I know Angela's won in the past too. Oh, Melanie got it. Yay, your comment came through that you got it. Oh! Oh, what is that? Oh. It's, iconic. it's called Iconic. I love it. Okay, it's number 25 in case you can't see that, but... It's mushrooms and a branch and a bird and a bumblebee and flowers. What are the coordinating stamps? There's that? nothing that coordinates with it. It is a standalone really? die set. I. That's maybe why I missed it. That's why you missed it. That's why I made sure to put it in here. I'm so happy number 25 just got called. <laughs> so I cannot wait to create with this. It's all dies and there's no stamp set. So it layers really good. It's just, it makes for a cool card. I, you have to go in the catalog. It's used on page 18 in the annual catalog. Nope, 25. Okay, so I know people had 25. A couple people did. Okay. All right, so, oh, look at this pretty card. Okay, so this isn't the number. It's on the backside, but Inspiring Canopy is a pretty set, too, with the trees. Uh, oh, that's number 14, the seaside shelves. Number 14, 14. All right, all right, all right. Oh, here's our tidings. Yes, Dev likes the mushrooms and the bee. I do too. Oh, he's so cute. Can't, you know, there's not enough time in the day mm -hmm. to make cards, guys. Christmas tidings is number 22. 22. Oh, yeah, I'm showing you guys the iconic now. Mo has STA. Latokia has an S, so she's not skunked. Roxanne, STA. Let's go with that one. Okay, our number seven, Batik. Stacy has the S, so she's not skunk. That's good. Carmen, S-T-A. Okay, number seven is there. Angela, S-T. Ooh, Roxanne. S-T-A-M. You're hot, girl. All right. Number five. Let's picture this. Number five. I... I got to see more cards with this one, guys. I might have mentioned that earlier, mm -hmm. but I got to see cards. I've seen the spotlight technique with it. Mm-hmm. And it's on the board with an S. Good job. Good job. Okay. Let's pick the one with the hydrangea on the back here. Hydrangeas are carrying over. Oh, that's the one with the meadow. You guys think I'd have this memorized by now, but I don't pay attention to what's on the back. I get so excited about talking about the stamp set and the dies. Mo's got S T A M as well. Okay, so Carmen's got S T A M. Uh, Melanie's got S T A. And we're waiting to see if anybody else comes through. 
Picture this as on Mo's list. Hmm. Yeah. So, oh, you said that has peekaboo. That's the one with the that's, animals. Yeah. Well, yeah. You can put like little animals in here oh. and have their faces showing. Carmen's got stamp. She does. Let's see what numbers you have, Carmen. You got a hot number set tonight. You better go play the lottery, girl. Tell us what numbers you have. And once you confirm it, Kelly said that you got the thumbs up as well. And you would get the babies. The babies. It's all about the babies. And then after we confirm it, we're going to pull in some, and we're going to do some door prizes. So I have what we're going to do is we're going to do the door prize drawing first. And so we had said that there's 50 people that filled out the door prize drawing. Thank you to everybody who filled it out. I know that every time you got to fill it out, but it helps us keep track because we delete all the information in there. And then it helps me to find if there's anybody new that I can reach out to to help them with their stamping. So we got two, the five, 11, 16, and 22. Kelly, there's nobody else that should have it? Okay, Carmen, you got two tonight. That's the cap. We always cap it at two. So you are a hot, hot, lucky lady tonight. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you get the baby set. So that will be coming in the mail to you. So for the door prizes, what we have, thanks. Oh, Angela says, congratulations. Yay. So what I have uh, for the door prizes, I have some beautiful pattern party paper. So I have eight packs. So there's three that are going to go to people who are playing. So in, if you haven't won yet, this is how it always goes. If you've won, you don't get a chance at a door prize. So it's to help extra people get more prizes. And so we're going to do the door prizes. And so there were five. And Kelly's got the list. And we're going to do a random number generator. So, um, yeah, thanks for everybody filling that out. I know it feels like you do that every time, and you do, because that's <laughs> our way to track for door prizes. So, but let me pop down here. So this is the pattern party paper. So you have two little six by sixes of all of these different patterns. This one is so, I love that one. I love this heart one. I like a lot, and then some just solid colors. And then look at the back though. So the back then is all black and white. I should go a little slower. So this is a hostess set. You get this for $18 with, um, and only as a host credit. So I don't remember how many sheets, that's 24 sheets, I think. And I have five of these that are going to people who um, signed up for the door prize. So Kelly has the list. Everybody, I put a number next. If you guys filled it out twice, I deleted your name the second time. So you only get your name in once. And so, Kelly, how many numbers are there? 52. Okay, so we're going to put in here a max of 52. And when I hit generate, it'll tell me a number. And we're going to, Kelly's going to yell out a name. So, number 33. Irma Pumphrey? Irma Pumphrey. You are a lucky winner of a pack of the paper, Irma. So, Kelly's going to be writing names down. And then we'll get these prizes out as well in the next little bit. So, um, Irma Pumphrey. So she's got that one. Next number, 49. Julie Ledbetter. Julie Ledbetter. So you filled out the door prize form. So Julie Ledbetter is a lucky winner of a pack of paper. Number 28. Tammy Steckling. Oh, Tammy Steckling. I don't know if I saw your name popping up at all throughout commenting, but Tammy Steckling, you get a pack of paper. Uh, did we just do number 49? Yeah. Okay, well, that was generated again, but we'll do another one. Number 26. Okay. Number 26 goes to... Ann Bellinger. Ann, you won. Yay, Ann Bellinger. You won one of the pack of papers. Congratulations. We have one more then, right? So yes. that's four. So number five is number four. Melanie Foy. Melanie Foy. You are number four. So you guys are lucky winners for paper. So now what I have here, though, is there were 29 people. So I'm going to give the list to Kelly. Everybody's got a number next to it. So number tw there's 29 people. So there's three more door prizes I'm giving away for... People that paid for, so extra three extra winners for people that participated. So we have 29, and if you've already won a prize, we're going to pick somebody else. So that's always my rule. So number 22 on that list is? 
Patricia Settle. Patricia Settle. You are a lucky winner of paper. Yay. Woohoo. Okay. And then the next number is number six. Ann Bellinger. So, Ann, <laughs> you would have won another one, but sorry. We're going to pick somebody else. Lucky girl. Number 18. Jeannie. No. Oh, you're looking on the paper. Yep, yep perfect. Jeannie Parker. Jeannie Parker. Jeannie, you are a winner. Winner. <laughs> oh, every time I say that, I'm going to think of Brenda's husband now. Okay. Oh, and then it went to number 17. Who was right before Jeannie okay. to sign up? Lynn Beasley. And Lynn won already, right? Yep. Yep. Lynn, sorry, you won, girlfriend. So we're going to pick somebody who didn't win. It's going to be number 15 if they didn't win. 15. Melanie Boy. Okay, Melanie, <laughs> you're, you won already. So we want to find another winner. Seven. Heather Roxbury. Oh, Heather Roxbury. Woohoo. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Heather Roxbury, you were the last winner for a door prize because you um, registered for game night. So wonderful. So we gave away five plus eight prizes. So we have 13 lucky winners. That's so awesome. So I wish everybody could always win everything, <laughs> including me, but it always doesn't work that way. So I try to give as much out as I can. And then I have um, tomorrow night for ink, paper, scissors, I have the fun folds card. So tomorrow night in class, we're gonna announce who the fun full winners are for for that. And yay! Did you guys have fun? I hope so. Kelly did a great job assisting, right? I kept her here. I'm Karen's probably watching and she knows that Kelly will be home soon, <laughs> soon so Karen can go home. Yay! So oh yes, congratulations to all the winners tonight. I hope that you guys had fun. I know that the internet probably made it more stressful on people than it should have been, but we figured out and we know now that it was a, a whole problem across the whole U.S. So hopefully you guys didn't have too much that you had to go back and forth and back and forth. And we tried to keep it that we were watching along with you. And so there wasn't stress and anxiety. So Well, and now we have a really good system. Yes, for you guys. Kelly just said it. We have a really good system. It's our one year anniversary. Oh, I forgot right? about that. Yes. So the first stamping game night and um, card workshop was in May of last year. It was, I think, May the 15th or May 14th. So we're on a year anniversary of this. I've done, this is our fifth one. Yep. I think our fifth one. We did four and then this is the start of the new year. So. And I remember the first one. It yeah. was before we were in the hive. Oh, yeah. And we did it in Zoom. Yep. We did it in Zoom and Facebook. And that and was really hard to manage. Yep. So that was the only time we did it. And it was way. in my back bedroom. Yep. <laughs> in where I used to be. So, yay. Okay, so you guys had fun. I'm glad. That's I love it. That's our always our goal is for you to have fun. Um, and now go finish your cards in case you didn't keep up with my fast fingers here. <laughs> so um, I never expect everybody to keep up with my cards when I make them. But that's why after the video is done, you guys can watch the replay. You also, whoever participated with getting kits from me, you have a PDF tutorial. So you can always have that by your side reading through my instructions too. So yay okay you guys mark your calendar for the next game night i believe we said i'm looking at the calendar it is september uh 9th with so, the turtle with the turtle turtle power Woo -hoo. do you guys want a teenage mutant ninja turtle <laughs> card i did see one out there so we could do that but uh, so all right you guys we will see you tomorrow at 5 Central for Ink, Paper, Scissors. I'm going to premiere what the Timeless Tropical cards are at the Ooh. end of class. Kelly saw They're them gorgeous. all tonight. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think you previewed one or two of them. I previewed one tonight, just one, but there's four of them. and They're all great. I got a lot of inspiration from my Hawaii trip, so yay! <laughs> all right, you guys, we'll see you tomorrow night. Lots of sunshine and love and hugs to you. Sleep well and have a good day tomorrow. <laughs> Bye!